All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, about 17 past six. Time to get started. By all means, you know, just roll wherever you want. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Brian Palmucci. I have the uh, distinct honor and privilege of representing Ward 4 on the City Council. We are here tonight, as you all likely know, to talk about a proposal from the MBTA to locate a bus depot at the old Lowe's site. Uh, I just want to go over a couple of ground rules of the community meeting. The, the purpose of having this meeting is so that uh, residents, neighbors, interested parties can ask questions and give opinions to uh, the MBTA. That's really the purpose of the meeting, and I'll kind of moderate, right? Uh, a couple of a couple of ground rules I always like to go over. Uh, first of all, I want to point out uh, colleagues in government. Uh, we have Senator uh, John Keenan, who's here. He represents the area. Obviously, um, very interested in the in the uh, the issues that affect Ward Four, and he's been a great uh, a great working partner up at. Uh, <coughs> we also have a representative from um, State Rep. Ron Mariano's office here with us tonight. So we thank Representative Mariano for for sending somebody to make sure he knows what's going on and what people are thinking. And we have the mayor's henchman, uh, Chris Walker, uh, <laughs> with us. He's the mayor's chief of staff. Um, so any problems you guys have with the city, potholes, plowing, anything, Chris is set up right back there. So we'll send, we'll give a Chris moment, okay? But no, obviously, uh, the mayor and I work hand in hand on a lot of issues. Uh, that affect our community. This is one of them. He and I have uh, have talked about this. We're, you know, I, I don't want to speak for him, but I, uh, we're pretty pretty much on the same page about this. And I'll just kind of lay it out when it comes to the MBTA. Um, and this is a little bit different than the community meetings I normally host. Normally, the, uh, it's a development project, and it, even when it's commercial, it has a process, a public process that it has to go through. So that could be before the planning board, before the city council, or before the zoning board. Uh, in this particular site, the way this site is zoned, it's zoned PUD, uh, which is like planned urban development, which is a special designation where in which the city council is the permit granting authority. Now the caveat to that, right, so anything that wanted to be, or, or, uh, be established there would have to go to the city council uh, for approval. Speaking of City Council, I noticed my colleague from um, the City Council and from Ward 4, Ann Mahoney, is here. So thank you, uh, Councilor Mahoney, for, for joining us. Um, so we go to the Council for approval, right? So, and we would have a public hearing. You'd have an opportunity to come up to the Council, see plans, talk to the Councilors prior to any vote. But because this is the MBTA and they are a, a state agency, the, the state statute that says the city, we're outranked. Right, so they don't have to follow any type of permitting process, which is disappointing for me, because that's how we usually, uh, lack of a better term, that's usually how we squeeze accommodations out of people, right? Like mitigation, whether it's fences or trees or you know hours of operation, those things. It's usually because they have to go through a permitting process and they need something from the city, so that empowers you all. Uh, in, in your concerns to be expressed through the city's conditions on any type of permit. That's off the table when it comes to the MBTA, okay? So I just wanna make that very clear. A lot of people were saying to me, Brian, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta oppose this, you gotta make sure that the city council doesn't vote for it, that the zoning board doesn't approve it. We are powerless when it comes to this particular issue. Uh, I'll point out our council president here, uh, Nina Liang, uh, Councillor at large, thank you for being here. Um, as you can see, we all care about this issue. And these guys all care about uh, South Quincy. They work work with me on the council quite frequently on issues that affect uh, your neighborhood. Uh, okay, so that's the that's my basic setup, right? I've already talked like, way longer than I want to talk. Uh, but so the ground rules: uh, the MBTA folks are going to make about a 10-minute presentation. I ask that we don't interrupt their presentation. Everybody will have a chance to ask questions, give their opinion, say whatever they want to say, and get it off their chest. Um, we will stay here until everybody has an opportunity to be heard, ask questions, and, and state uh, their opinions, okay? So let's just give them 10 minutes, and then we'll, we'll get after them, okay? Uh, I'll moderate questions and answers and try and keep it civil. Uh, 
I ask that, you know, we try to be civil, we try to be respectful. This isn't Facebook, we're all here in person. So let's, you know, uh, be respectful of our neighbors. Uh, I don't know, who's filming this? Who are you? QA TV. Oh, okay, QA TV is filming this. So uh, usually it's John Rotify who films it. Um, but so just be aware that you're being filmed. If you don't want to be filmed, then, you know, stay away from the camera. Um, you, can, you can flag me down or, or um, Chris Walker, one of the other counselors, and we'd be happy to ask a question if you're uncomfortable asking a question because it's being filmed or because you just don't like speaking in front of crowds, okay? Everyone good with that? Good so far? I'm trying to think if I forgot anything else. Oh, um, before I introduce the MBTA, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, you don't have site control, right? That's correct. Okay, so it's an important question a lot of folks have asked me. Currently, so Lowe's is gone, right? They shut down. George Brewster owns that land. Okay, he owns that site. Um, on that site contains two easements, two important easements. One is for residents of South Quincy to be able to walk unobstructed. So they have to clear snow, they have to keep things out of the way so that folks can walk from your neighborhood in South Quincy to the MBTA station. Okay, that is an easement that is. And an easement means it's with the land, it's in the deed, it's required, they have to do it, okay? That continues no matter what, all right? Uh, the other easement doesn't affect you guys so much, but there's two businesses, um, uh, P.V. Sullivan and Caniff Monument. They have an easement, which is like the electronic gate on the right side over where the garden center was. They have an easement, okay, to get trucks through. And the reason why those easements exist is because when the whole Lowe's setup came in and we closed down, the city closed down a public street. So you all had access before. And in order to maintain that access, you had to have these easements, okay? So these easements, I mean, I'm curious as to what they're gonna say about the easements, but those are things that we will certainly be looking for moving forward and we expect to, to move forward. Uh, so Brewster owns the land, Lowe's had a lease, like a 20 year lease, 30 year lease, whatever it was. There's a good chunk of years left on that lease. Lowe's was responsible for the lease, my understanding, is that they have uh, they have sold their interest in the lease to another entity? Okay, I think it's like National Realty. Uh, National Realty owns the lease rights. Current Brewster owns the land. All right, that is the state of how things are. Now the MBTA has expressed interest. Uh, my understanding is that from their most re recent uh, board meeting, that they're authorized to attempt to acquire the lease rights. And then their long-term plan, which is I think what they're gonna talk about tonight, is to acquire the site in some capacity and, and build a, a bus depot. As many of you are aware, Amazon has been sniffing around. They had surveyors and engineers out there on the site. I have uh, seen a tentative plan that I don't even know where I got it from, but it was no official source, uh, of what it would look like if there was an Amazon, um, I don't know what they call it, like a shipping depot thing, right? What is it? Yeah, distribution center. The thing they wanted to build in Braintree and then didn't want to be in Braintree anymore. Um, so, and I've been contacted by an attorney that represents Amazon. They are still actively interested in the site. What's gonna happen with this site, I do not know. Um, but the lay of the land is now that National Realty has control of the site. Brewster still owns it. The MBTA is interested in it. If Amazon approaches me and says, here's a plan, we're, we're actively going forward, we're gonna try and acquire the site, I'll have a similar meeting and we'll, we'll talk to Amazon, right? With you guys, so that everybody knows what's going on. I try and tell you all everything I know as soon as I know, because you guys are gonna find out I like telling you rather than you telling me. Um, so, all right, without further ado, I will, um, I'll turn it over to the MBTA. Scott, I forget your last name. Hamway. Hamway? Hamway. Oh, okay. yep. here's Scott. Thank you, Counselor, I uh, appreciate it. Uh, thanks everybody, my name is Scott Hamway. I'm the director of the bus modernization program at the MBTA and want to uh, thank the counselor for the introduction. I, I do want to say that um, in my own neighborhood of East Boston, I'm a regular attendee in community meetings, so I, I certainly, um, I, I appreciate the counselor suggesting everybody be cordial and polite, but I know that's not always uh, possible when I'm sitting Scott, can you speak up or yeah. there's a microphone down yeah, there you sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I'm just going to run through, if we can go to the agenda slide. Um, if we can go to the agenda slide. I'm just going to run quickly through 
Uh, the MBTA bus system that my, the program I'm working on is, is focused on talk uh, a little bit about our proposal to relocate the Hancock Street facility over to the Lowe's site. Uh, the council referenced. Uh, we'll talk about what some of the benefits of that new facility would be for uh, the community, for uh, bus riders in Quincy, and then as the councilor noted, there is uh, there are some near-term uses that we are uh, considering at the site that we'll talk about as well. So if we go to the next uh, slide. Um, so the MBTA, which I have some colleagues here representing as well, we serve 1.2, over 1.2 million trips per day in the Boston region, and a big part of how we do that is with the bus. The bus serves about one-third of those trips. I think a lot of people Think of the T as the, you know, the red, the orange, the blue line. The bus is a real workhorse of the system, uh, serving about a third of the trips. And we serve those trips with a fleet of over 1,000 buses uh, operating on 170 routes uh, with thousands of bus stops, dozens of communities uh, served. And the bus is a real important, the, the bus is a really important way that we support uh, the T's ability to meet a whole host of, of regional greater Boston goals that the T is sort of designed to, to, to accomplish. Those are goals around equity, economic development, and the environment. Go to the next slide on equity. Uh, the bus, as you can see in that top row, comparing it to the next three, the bus is, is clearly uh, the mode that um, serves our lower income uh, customers, the, the folks in the region that are most vulnerable, that have uh, the fewest other options to get around. So it's certainly an important mode from an equity standpoint compared to our other services. And the bottom row there shows you that the bus routes that we serve out of the Quincy Garage and Hancock Street, which with two exceptions are, are serving the city of Quincy, uh, that, that, that service mirrors the rest of the network. So this is, uh, this is an important mode for us to, to improve and do well because it's, it's, it's really the only alternative for a lot of the folks in the greater Boston region uh, for mobility. In terms of economic development, I think one of the biggest um, we have the next slide. One of the biggest um, challenges to continued economic growth in the Commonwealth in Eastern Massachusetts is the congestion problems that we're all facing wherever we live uh, inside 128. It's, it's, it's a big problem. It's something that Governor Baker has made a priority uh, over the last year. It was the subject of a multi-day spotlight series in the Boston Globe last month. So it's a, it, we know it's a big issue. It's, it's a big issue in Quincy. If we go to the next um, the next slide, it's, it's, it's really intensified in, in recent years here, as it has in a lot of other communities. There's been a lot of development happening up and down the Red Line Corridor, particularly in Quincy Center. And the reality is, if we're going to continue to kind of support this level of economic development and, and residential and job growth in the region, we need to improve transit to try to, to, try to address congestion issues. Getting more people uh, onto the bus, onto other modes of transit is going to be um, the only way we can kind of continue to kind of have a real livable uh, environment here in the Boston area. And then lastly, on the environment, um, obviously the more people we can get out of their own uh, private automobiles and to, and to buses and trains, that's good for the environment. We also, as part of this program, are trying to make the bus mode itself more environmentally friendly, moving away from older diesel buses, the kind of which uh, we currently operate out of the Hancock Street facility, and move to lower emission vehicles like battery electric buses. Um, so this, this program is really a way to try to do all three of those things. Um, but in order to accomplish kind of any of those goals, if we go to the next slide, um, we need places to uh, store these buses, park them overnight, park them when we're not using them, and also to, to maintain them so we can keep them reliable and, and keep them out going for service. We have nine facilities around the MBTA service area uh, where we do that. Um, they vary in size. The facility on Hancock Street is uh, one of our smaller facilities. Um, it's also one of the more local ones. If you look at, uh, if you look at the network, Lynn and Quincy are, are sort of these outer garages in the network that primarily are serving local routes. That's not always the case as you get uh, closer into Boston. You have garages that are serving routes over a much uh, larger geography. So these are really our, our local garages. And one thing that's consistent across most of these garages is they're very, very old. Um, the, the facilities, as you can see, average over 50 years of age. Um, the Quincy facility has been a bus garage since 1930. That's one of our oldest. And the picture on the bottom right there shows you that before it was a, before it was a uh, bus garage in 1930, at least for a quarter century before that, it, it functioned as a light rail facility. So it's not surprising um, that these facilities are increasingly difficult places to, to maintain um, our buses adequately. If we go to the next slide. Um, so the program that I'm managing um, is, is really designed to try to do three things. So one is uh, we, are, we get constant um, requests from 
cities and towns, advocates, the business community to try to provide more bus service because we have a lot of people, we have a lot of bus routes that are crowded, you can't get on them. Um, and one of the realities is we're currently constrained by how many, we're currently constrained by our facilities. So we, we, we are limited in our ability to add more bus service, particularly during peak periods because we simply have no place to, to store and maintain them. We are maxed out at these nine facilities. So that's a big part of this program is expanding, um, expanding bus service. A second goal that I alluded to earlier is, is we're really looking to um, really make the bus a cleaner, more environmentally sustainable mode. So we're trying to convert all of our facilities to be able to accommodate battery electric buses. And then the third one <laughs> relates to our workforce. So it's not surprising that if you, you have facilities that are 50, 75, 100 years old, these are not state of the art, um, high quality uh, work environments for our workforce. So that's another key component of this program is to try to give our employees um, a really good modern uh, workplace uh, to give them the best shot of, of keeping our, 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 uh, our vehicles up and running so we can serve our customers. The reason why we're starting, and, and this picture by the way is to show you that, you know, if you, we don't have good examples in the Boston area of, of bus facilities that were built in the last half century, but this is the, the newest bus facility in the Commonwealth. This was built a couple of years ago in Worcester. This is the Worcester Regional Transit Authority bus garage. So, so new modern bus garages, they tend to be fully enclosed. They're not kind of open air maintenance happening. And they look, they look more like a big box store or an office building that you might see along the highway than some of the older facilities that we do have in the area. The reason why we're starting with Quincy, um, in addition to wanting to do all these things for Quincy, if you go to the next slide, Quincy has some, some specific challenges that, that are requiring us to move as quickly as we can uh, to try to Im improve this. As you, as you can see, um, all of the things I mentioned before are true. The, the Quincy facility on Hancock Street is, is, is really constrained. We've got things all around us there that would prevent us from really expanding the fleet size at that location. And frankly, if we were to make the modernization um, investments to allow battery electric buses to be served here, we would not even be able to get the 86 buses that we currently operate out of Quincy uh, there. Um, and it's, you can see from some of these pictures, it's not, a, it's not a great environment for our workforce. We have to do really convoluted things to maintain buses here, including jacking them up one end at a time because they're physically too big to fit kind of under the, under the ceiling and in, 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 in the facility. So, um, and that last issue is important because the only buses we currently have of our 1,050 buses that can physically fit in this facility and be, be maintained there are our oldest uh, vintage of buses. We have about 300 uh, buses that range in age from about 11 to, to 14 years old. Um, those buses are soon going to start to be phased out and replaced with new modern buses. And new modern buses have a lot of their HVAC and other equipment uh, on, on the roof. And it, it, it basically creates a, a taller uh, bus. The, the standard modern buses has a higher profile than older ones. So once we get to the point where we have to retire the 86 buses at Quincy, there will be no modern bus we can put into that facility. So we feel like the clock is ticking. Um, the Federal Transit Administration sort of assumes a 14 year lifespan for buses is the recommended one, which means we're, we're kind of in the final three years. We think we can, we can with a recent investment in an overhaul, we can get a, another year or two there maybe, but, but this is why Quincy is in a different category than the rest of the program and why we're starting here first. Uh, if you go to the next slide. Um, so we, we, we did a site search, we explored a range of locations across the inner south shore where we could try to locate a facility. We have specific needs as, as, it, as it relates to uh, physical um, you know, um, acreage of, of a site. It needs to be of a suitable size. It needs to be of a suitable topography. Um, and we want to have good roadway access, uh, which the low site certainly has. And the other thing that's important is we want, to, we want to have this facility as close as we can to the routes we're serving. Otherwise, the MBTA has to run a lot of service without any customers running through neighborhoods and, and driving up costs just to get to where these routes start. Uh, most of our Quincy service radiates out of Quincy Center. So the Hancock Street facility is in a really good location for that, about a mile uh, west of the center. This facility is a comparable distance uh, to the south. So this was, this was by far the, the most attractive site that we saw uh, in our search. Go to the next slide. Um, these are uh, things the community probably knows much, much better than I do, but some of the uses that were on this, some of the industrial uses that had historically been 
uh, on this site prior to Lowe's when it had been multiple uh, individual parcels. You go to the next slide. Um, and then again, just, just a couple, uh, two, three more slides, just you know, some of the benefits of this. Um, by you can see from the picture here, we're, we're envisioning a much uh, more modern um, workplace, again, for our mechanics, for our bus operators. Um, this is uh, going to be a, a modern, fully enclosed facility um, that, that we think will be an attractive addition uh, to the community. We know that our, our customers today are, are, are accessing the red line through this site, that's something that we think is important and we're, and we're gonna work to include and, and hopefully upgrade it from just cutting you know, across the parking lot, upgrade that into a better experience for our customers. And again, this is gonna be our first facility where we can operate battery electric buses. Those buses are, they're quieter, they're much cleaner. Um, so this is, this is really positioning Quincy to go from the current situation where we're running our oldest, loudest, you know, um, you know dirtiest buses essentially out of the Hancock facility by, by necessity because they're the only ones we can put there. Uh, this will allow us to, um, on day one at a minimum, put our newest hybrid buses here, and this will be the first facility that's able to accommodate battery electric buses as that technology advances. If you go to the next uh, slide, this is just a, a map here to show you the routes that are served out of the Quincy garage today. So again, this is a very local garage. We're not sending buses from here to West Roxbury or Brookline. These are mostly routes uh, serving, serving Quincy and the immediate surrounding communities. And by building this garage, which, we're, which we, you know, we don't have a, a sort of final number yet, but we're, we're envisioning a facility that could accommodate uh, maybe about a 40% increase above and beyond what the existing Hancock Street facility um, accommodates. That will allow us to look at ex expanding service for Quincy uh, bus routes, provide more service so we can reduce overcrowding, um, and and you know we think that's a real and, and and also just create the environment for our workforce to to maintain our buses and keep them reliable and up and running. So we think there are certainly benefits for transit riders in Quincy. Uh, if we go to the next slide. Um, so uh, the councilor mentioned a, a short-term use. So, so basically, as our real estate team was exploring sites for the uh, full facility, uh, they also are on the lookout for other uh, needs that the MBTA has. Um, the low site, which had recently become vacant, I think when the team first, um, first started looking at it, um, is a site that works really well for a couple of short-term uses that the MBTA has that are unrelated to, to the program I'm, I'm leading. So one of those uh, on the right is, is Quincy Adams Garage and, and Braintree uh, Station Garage. Those, garage um, those garages are being reconstructed and, and modernized themselves in order to expedite that um, project. We're shutting down portions of the garage. I think we're closing out 400 spaces at the Braintree Garage in a, in a, in a couple weeks. Um, the Lowe's parking lot, which already informally is sort of becoming spillover parking from Quincy Adams, we can now sort of maintain that and, and, and control that and make it a safer kind of parking environment for our customers and allow us to expedite projects like the Quincy Adams and Braintree Garage. At the same time, the T has significant, it's not just bus storage that's a problem, we have significant storage needs for spare parts, capital spares, other, other needs. This is an image uh, taken from out in uh, Springfield where we're currently building the new Red Line fleet uh, that'll serve Quincy. Um, you can see a, I think a car in the back there. That when, once those uh, cars start to come on board and, and go into operation later this year, uh, we are, you know, we're going to need a place to start to store uh, those those parts and those spares so that we can keep that fleet uh, up and running um, constantly. So the Lowe's site is the Lowe's building is a, is is obviously a a good place if you need to store a lot of a lot of things uh, for a short period of time. So those were the near term uses. Um, that we identified that we're hoping to be able to move forward with. And then I guess just the last slide on um, next steps. We are uh, in conversations with the entity controlling the site about trying to you know, get in there so we can use it for these short-term uses. Um, you know, moving forward with a, with a permanent bus facility here, there are a host of environmental uh, processes we have to go through um, as well as federal um, regulations that govern how we would acquire the property for the long term. So we have to go through that process. It's not, um, it's not a super quick process, but we're, we're looking to start uh, making progress in those fronts. And then certainly we, we, we were uh, very happy, Councillor Palmucci invited us out tonight to talk about the program and we're committed to continuing that engagement. 
uh, with his office, uh, with the mayor's office, Senator Keenan and others, and, and all of you uh, going forward. So this is just sort of the first first time out here to introduce you to the to the concept. Thank you, Scott. Uh, a couple quick things before we start uh, questions. I don't know. No one's ever not heard me. Um, I just want to point out that uh, Representative Taki Chan has joined us. Thank uh, the representative for being here and uh, listening to what folks have to say. And I forgot to introduce uh, our school committee member, Kathy Hubley, uh, who comes to a lot of these meetings uh, for the same purpose to hear what folks have to say. And, um, then lastly, I'll just note that we have Frank Tremontosi here from the mayor's office. And uh, Frank is like the transportation guru. Uh, he has decades of experience in the transportation field. He's, a, he's been a great resource in the mayor's office. And, is always a key point person on things like this. And so the mayor's asked him to be here tonight to listen to what your concerns are as well. So, um, all right, we'll do hands. Who wants to go first? Questions, comment? All right, fire away. Hi, um, I live on Pennington Street, my name's Tom Orlando. Um, you have the structure now, the footprint of um, Lowe's as it stands right now. Is it in your plans to expand that and make, it, make another addition to that on the parking lot that you have? Uh, so we, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, um, so uh, we are at very early stages of sort of exploring the design for the site. Um, one thing we do know is that Town Brook uh, is a waterway that runs sort of bisects the site. Um, I think if you look at how the Lowe's property is currently laid out, it's it's clear that the Lowe's building specifically tried to avoid that um, that um, body of water, and they've got parking on one side of it and the building on the other. Uh, it looks like that would be the way that we would have to design the site for a bus garage. So we would probably have a building that would be, you know, roughly the same footprint that the Lowe's building is with, with employee parking where the customer parks. So you probably double what you have now. Double what we have on Hancock Street? Right. You, um, I think, yeah, I mean, I think Hancock Street is not, an, it's not the ideal way to lay out a garage. Obviously, we're, we're building off of streetcar right. technology from a century ago. Um, so yeah, this, this facility would be a little bit bigger even if we were just gonna do, go with 86 buses. But we know that um, across the network, we're constrained in our ability to run more service when people want it. So we wanna, with every chance we have, we wanna get a little bit bigger. Okay. Would you keep the existing building footprint and just add the building? Yeah, I think in order to build the type of facility that we would want to build that would be able to accommodate battery electric buses and the weight of our buses, that it would, it would be an entirely new structure, albeit one that's probably not significantly different in terms of the footprint, but it would be a new building. What, um, oh, two? Really? Sorry. I'll come back to you, okay? <sighs> Hi, uh, my name is Maureen Sevy. I live on Columbia Street. Don't mess with Maureen. So, and I, my property affects the lowest platform of the structure. Um, what have you got planned for the surrounding neighborhood to cut down on all the noise? Uh, if you're going to be knocking down that building, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of dust and you know, whatever. Are you going to have a meeting with the neighbors to instruct them as to what they can be going to with the wheels and everything from the buses? So before yeah. I, let me just read for folks in any answers. Two questions in that. Short term, during construction, what would be the impact on neighbors and how are you going to keep them informed? And then the second is long term, what, we, what are you going to do to buffer the uh, residential uh, streets that are behind it from? Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Literally, right. Literally behind and, and the apartment building. What was the, what was the street I'm saying? Uh, I was going to say that Columbia oh. Street. Oh. It abuts yep. So, um, these fence that they have, they are not really didn't do anything. We, they were supposed to build us a, a higher fence than that, and they did. We had to fight for that. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just concerned about the quality of life for us on that street in particular. We've had to go through a lot of changes. We went through a lot of arguments with Lowe's. They didn't uh, own up to the, what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to clean their houses after all that construction because they knocked down a factory. So we're just a little bit concerned as to how our life is going to change again. We're long time in yeah, no, no, I uh, totally, under totally understand and respect that. I, I think that, again, this is, the, this is the first time out here. I think you'll see a lot more uh, of me and, and the rest of the team as this project would go forward. Um, we're obviously a, a local company right at the MBTA, and, and Councillor Palmucci or Senator Keenan or any of your 
representatives of City Hall certainly have, a, have, have, have means to kind of reach us if, if something's going wrong. Uh, certainly as we move into a construction phase, there would be regular updates to the community um, and regular opportunities to the community to provide input. Um, I think that we, um, we, can, we can be a really great neighbor to the community here. We're not going to have all day um, retail traffic in the way that something like Lowe's would have or maybe some other uses would have. Um, as I said, this is, we're setting Quincy up to be the first place to get our cleanest, you know, zero emission vehicles uh, to run here. So I think that's, that, that's another way that we can make a use that maybe historically would be not such a great one, a, a better one. And we're committed to making the facility entirely enclosed. So we have some facilities where we're doing a lot of heavy work outside and that can be noisy for, for, for neighbors. Um, some of the abutters of Hancock Street are, are you know, it's, it, it, you know, it's been there a hundred years, so people yeah. might not complain as you know as much, yeah. but it's it's noisier. So we think we can be a really good neighbor there. And then as far as just you know, we're at the early stage of design. So in terms of like what the edge of this site would look like, I mean, those are conversations that have to happen. But we we are certainly committed to making sure that pedestrian access continues. And it's and again, it's unlikely to just be an unceremonious kind of cut through a parking lot. We'd like to look at the park space that's on on the Columbia Road side there and see if there's a way to kind of thread that are on the edge so people can have a nicer environment to get through so uh, but we're committed to working with the, with the community and the city on, on this could i could i hold on a second can i can i make the request that the next time we perhaps have a meeting should you guys move forward that you have some um i, I presume you'll have some plans at that point but that you do some sight line plans uh, oh, so know. people could get a sense so of what people the get a sense that the, the folks who live on, on that side it's odd is it their properties sit like maybe five or six feet above so when they're looking out their front steps or yeah. you know on their porch mm -hmm. they're looking kind of down into the Lowe's parking lot so a five foot fence a six foot fence whatever we ended up squeezing out of Lowe's it does nothing to block their view so you're going to need something a little more robust and I don't think a fence is probably the best Options some natural no, yeah. screen, but okay, yeah, barrier, but yeah, so we can when we come back out, we can certainly have renderings that you know I, I don't I don't know if the next time we come out we'd have a full architectural design of what the final thing would look like, but we can start to give folks a sense of the the scale of the building and and you know whether you'd be looking at walls or windows and, or garage doors, we we can start to come in and, and do that from the I think probably from the community you know, Columbia Penn from the streets that abutters are closest to, they're probably the places we want to. Go ahead. Would the fence stay the same? Will that location of the fence will be pushed back? So we, yeah, so, so it's. So, um, yeah. Tabor Street was an access for the right of comment. Will that still be used in the event, or would that be? I would think it has to be. I mean, I would think they need a secondary access point, but without them knowing the exactly where the building's going to go and how big it is. I don't think they would know that yet, but... There's one up on Penn Street, too. Right. But Cain Street was used, and that was the Penn. That's back on the Columbia side yes, there. Yes, Columbia. The, there's like a gap. The table. Yeah, it's that okay. gap. Where it looks like the, where the parking lot was kind of going to feed yes, into. Yes, and there's two barriers there. Right. That's just a it's fire gate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. The so Penn Street, that line. Yeah, so, so again, where I think where we are, I mean, we didn't, um, you know, we, I think the, the counselor sort of called and asked us to come out, I think, pretty, you know, pretty early in this process. So we're not, we're not that far along in terms of design. So we, we are, you know, we are, we, we do want to come back out as we get a little bit further down the road with the process and, sh and, and give you something to respond. We don't really have anything to respond to you, for you to respond to, unfortunately, other than just the concept of a we're here to get your input early so that they can't say they didn't know when they come back with the plan. Right, go ahead. Um, have you considered a spot that, I don't know, a mile away, if you were having this meeting, no one would be there? There's no residents around? So our, our real estate, our, our real estate team to do a, a canvas of a, a, a well, right, at, right at Braintree T Station, you got the old motel, exactly. you have your expanded parking lot right there, no residents. Yeah. What about yeah. that? So, so again, uh, you know, we um, we did look at at least a half dozen sites in the in the sort of inner inner South Shore. This one, this one by far was was the most attractive site. I think one of the things that makes um, this location better than Braintree is just it, it it's more central to our network. We don't have to run as much bus service with nobody with no customers on it just to get to where the service starts. Yeah. Yeah, that's just no right. Yeah. Yeah. 
but this, but I, I, I can just say that, th that we did, we did explore a range of sites, and we certainly know that uh, a an environment without any abutters is always going to be an easier place for us to site any any facility. We we did look at a range of sites, and we had the criteria that I listed on that slide, and this was the this was by far the sort of consensus uh, choice uh, for us. This is a massive project for a lease parcel. Is your goal to acquire the property from Richester or? Yeah, so our, our goal is to have a, a, a long-term um, bus maintenance facility here, so we, we, we are looking to acquire the property uh, to, con to control the site for, for the long term. But you don't get to ask questions. You're just here to report on it. <coughs> ask him. Oh, go ahead. Fine. All right. How, if the MBTA does own the uh, location, how would that affect uh, property taxes? Okay. You won't pay tax property taxes, right? Yeah, so about six hundred thousand yeah. dollars you'll cost us. We are yeah. So as a state yeah state state government we would not be paying property taxes. Exactly. I, Chris about six hundred thousand right. So we're getting in that that now. No, I don't. Go all in. Go ahead. Because they study the traffic impact in that area, but the very congested yeah. around quality of the atoms. People want to pay attention to the lights. Lee Quincy Adams, you know, there's a sign that says no right turn, and most people go through that right turn. And because of the construction going at Quincy Adams, people are getting off of the bus, or the five dozen donuts, and crossing the very park. It, it's already been a reef there going to it's not going to kill. So the increase in buses has the team planning to study that area. What do you think? I can answer that, Scott. So I don't think they've studied it yet as it relates to this project, but I can tell you when. The MBTA first approached the, the mayor and I about this relatively recently. That was one of the top concerns that we had. It's That's a state-governed uh, intersection because it's right off the, the highway. So I, we get a lot of the concerns about it because it's in Quincy. People call when they're stuck there, they call me. But um, it's a state-governed highway. So I know that's something that uh, Frank Tremontosi in the mayor's office has been trying to work with the, uh, the state folks, Mass DOT, about what we can do to improve that intersection in general, but it, it needs to be upgraded, it needs to be redesigned, and before they open up a bus facility, that would really have to happen, because it it barely works now. It, some might say it doesn't, right? It barely works now. You add 120 buses to it, and the, uh, you know, and the carmen's guys coming to, to, to work every day, it's, it's not gonna work. So they would have to fix that intersection. And one, one last question, what's gonna happen to the old building? So I just want to build off of what Councillor Palmucci, Councillor Palmucci's response to your first question, uh, which is, uh, while we've not done an exhaustive traffic analysis yet, that is part of those environmental reviews, uh, that environmental review process we have to go through both the federal and state level, so we will be doing that. I will say that our our expectation uh, is that, and then we, we think this is this will be borne out by that analysis, is that uh, a retail big box store like Lowe's is actually a much bigger traffic generator in terms of number of trips in and out of here. We, our, our buses tend to all kind of get out before, like before the peak of morning rush hour, because we're trying to get them out there to get people kind of on their commutes, and then they, they tend to be kind of flowing back, uh, you know, at the end, <clears throat> at the end of the peak period. So we're we're not usually, at least our, our buses, and then our and then our workforce, which has to get in even earlier, is not usually competing at the peak of the peak with, with, when the congestion is is the biggest issue. And then just in terms of number of trips, you know, you've got a, a bus operator drives in in the morning and leaves eight hours later. It's not it's not the constant turnover that a like a Home Depot or a Lowe's would have. Um, your second question, um, it's premature for us to know what happens on Hancock Street. Uh, certainly, there's the potential that if that site is not something the MBTA needs for another use, that that could that could become a, a private uh, development, which would then mitigate some of the tax loss that we talked, local tax uh, revenue loss that we talked about earlier. But uh, but we're we're really focused on getting a new facility in place. That's the, that's the focus right now. And, yeah, so it's a very old site. Yeah, we, we're we're focused on getting a new facility built. We we're not in a position to to start to move away from the Hancock Street site until we've got a new place to, to move those buses. Um, but yeah, I think they'll there will want to be a conversation about what what the future of that site looks like once we once we know where we're going and when we're going to get there. Sure. Yeah, uh, I live off uh, Center Street. I'd like to know when you. Repair all these buses. Are they going to be running up and down Santa Street going about 100 miles an hour? Or where do you plan to put them? 
when you repair them. Because I see, I work, I have worked down here, the Hancock Street. I see the buses leaving there all the time, out of, you know, being repaired. And they fly up and down Hancock Street. They're going to be flying up and down Center Street also. So, I mean, I you mean like when they're repairing it to make sure they're working? They, yes. they like jam yeah, on the cast cast ride. Okay. It's <laughs> a good question. Yeah, so I think uh, one, um, you know, right right now we do have a lot of buses that use Hancock Street when they're coming out of the garage to get to Quincy Center and, and start their trips. Um, Bergen Bergen Parkway would be the street that would see the biggest increase, I think, in, in bus traffic. That would be the corridor that buses from this facility would use to get to Quincy Center. Um, in terms of bus service, I mean, we have bus service on Center Street today. We'd have the potential to explore more frequent service, but certainly nothing that would look like constant bus traffic on, on, on Center Street. I think Bergen Parkway would be the street that would be likely to get the biggest increase in, in bus traffic. And then that part of and then that part of Hancock Street um, from the from the from the from the, from the uh, stadium into the center would be the part that would probably see the biggest uh, reduction uh, in bus in bus traffic. But there's no plan as part of this garage project to necessarily change the, the service we're running uh, on the dozen or so routes we're running in Quincy today. Rosemary, what are your thoughts? <coughs> really thick on this. First of all, first of all, do we really want to put an MBTA station as our gateway into Quincy? Does that say welcome to Quincy, MBTA, all of the world? I, 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 I don't think this is an ideal location for what they want to do. Clearly, this guy has not driven the Bergen Parkway during rush hour. Right. So if you've got to get buses in and out to try and take people, even when they had to shut the line and use transport you by bus to the next station from Quincy, the traffic on that Bergen Parkway is brutal now. You want to put how many buses on it? How many? 120? All these buses you're going to put in this station are all going to be brand new buses, not one of those old ones. They're all going to be electric, is that correct? They're going uh, they, to bring not one of those old dirty diesel buses up to that station. Right, so those buses need to be, we need to retire those buses within the next four years. So when this facility were to open, which four years would probably be about as aggressively as we could get it open, the, immediately Quincy will be getting cleaner buses. So wherever you live in Quincy, you will no longer have the oldest buses going by your house. You'd have the newest buses. Um, I, I certainly take your point on, um, you know, whether or not this, you know, the, 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 uh, you know, the facility is the right... study is what you need to do before you even think about putting a facility there because the traffic study has to come first. You're not going to use Penn Street. You're not going to use Columbia Street. You've got easements that are going to cause a problem to you because I'm going to tell you what, Sullivan, Sullivan Plumbing at the present right now has its trucks come in 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning from Texas. Big 18 wheelers carrying big, big pipes. Okay? Where do you think they go? They used to park in the neighborhood. But after Lowe's come in and they got their visas, they park all those trucks along in that facility. Now, if they can't do that, I've been told if we can't use that to park our trucks in, we'll just park them in the neighborhood. Up and down Penn Street, up and down Liberty Street, up and down Center Street at 2 o'clock in the morning. Those drivers do not shut their engines off. When they get there in the winter, in the, summer, in the summer, in the winter they have their heat on while they're sleeping because they're tired from driving from Texas. In the summer they have more than they want their air conditioning on. You have to accommodate all of Sullivan's trucks to make sure all of his trucks that come with the lifts, and there's probably about maybe 10, 15 of them, right? that would have to park in that facility. And, and as far as traffic goes, you're going to have workers coming and going, you're going to have dry truck drivers, bus drivers coming and going. There's a lot of traffic you're going to create on that Bourbon Parkway. Do your traffic study before you do that. I'm telling you, this gentleman is right. Half a mile down the street, one, less than a mile down the street, which isn't going to make a difference for an electric bus, is an open lot that you can, you can tear down that hotel and build what you want there in your way beside the highway. They had it on the, on the news tonight how oh, it's not that far from that station to the Quincy Adams station. It's a close jaunt. You need yeah. to do a traffic study. Yeah, no, there you're not going to impact the traffic of people coming and going and working, trying to get up and down that Bergen Park. It's a mess in the morning anyway. 
Yeah, and, and certainly I just want to emphasize, Rosemary, we're, we're, we're certainly going to be doing a traffic study before this project moves forward. We, we, we can't actually acquire the site. We can't move forward with federal uh, support until we've done a full environmental review, which will include a, a full traffic analysis, the results of which we will certainly bring back to the community and share with you. And to the, to the larger point, I think this is, this is the reality is, um, this is one of the toughest parts of the role I have at the MBTA is that it's not just it's not just this community in Quincy that 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 might want something other than a bus garage. That's that's true across the entire Boston region. There's no community that wants a bus garage as their first choice. The reality is we've got you know we've got 450,000 people that live in these communities that, that rely on the bus to get around. We have to store and maintain these buses somewhere. And frankly, it's the it's the best chance we have to kind of add transit service and give people other options. So. We, we know every one of these is going to be a difficult conversation in every community, um, and, and so I, I, I don't, I'm not trying to minimize it, I just, no, from I our perspective. what you're saying, but you're talking about putting that bus station at the gateway to this city. Right. That's, how it's, that's how we were introduced. We're going to have the Deco building here. That's it's right. the gateway to Quincy. It's going to make Quincy more welcoming. Having that T station there, that bus station there, is not a welcoming stop for this city or anybody in this city that has to pay taxes. You get off the hook. We don't. Our taxes keep going up, and yours aren't going to even pay. That's the difference. Why should we have to suffer to put you there when we could, in that, in that mall, put a mini, mini store, a mini Derby, Derby, what they have up in Derby Street, with stores that are going to pay taxes that are going to bring revenue in that might, might, and I just say the word might, big capital. Keep our taxes where they are, because nothing is going to lower our taxes. But your being there, and us losing almost a million dollars a year in taxes, is definitely going to raise all our taxes. Right. Not making any of us in this room or anybody in this city happy. Renters or anybody else, because their, their rent is going up <laughs> if the taxes go up. It's a simple fact. That plus the traffic is my problem. Thanks. Amen. Um, I just want to say that um, I'm the Wallace resident. I'm really happy to hear of the, your plans to implement a clean bus depot, which I do believe will, with the expanded service, will reduce traffic, and it being clean energy will be less pollution and improved health. And I would like to know whether you are considering equipping the depot with 100% the capability for 100% all electric buses, um, knowing that that not only will help Massachusetts reach our greenhouse gas goal emission goals, but also improve the health of the community and save money since each bus has a lifetime savings of $200,000 and up per electric bus compared to the diesel hybrids and $55,000 savings in healthcare costs in the community. Yeah, so that is, that's our commitment here in Quincy is that we will design and, and construct a facility that can accommodate an entirely battery electric bus fleet. That, that is the goal. Um, I will say that uh, while we have five buses on site now that we're testing that are battery electric bus, um, sort of a pilot, a mini fleet that we're running out of the Southampton garage in Roxbury, um, the, technology, the technology is not where we'd want to be for us to roll out a, a facility today and, and operate all battery electric buses today one of the big issues that we're that the technology is improving on but isn't quite there yet is is sort of um in our climate sort of heating a lot of the battery charges of going to heating the bus on winter days so they they work great in the summer fall spring the technology is getting better every year our our hope is that by the time this facility opens we'd be in a position to start buying on you know all battery electric buses uh, to maintain, you know, to, to maintain and operate out of here. At a minimum, though, the the day this facility opens, we will be able to start to run the much cleaner hybrid diesel buses that we're not able to run in Quincy today out of this facility. But but either way, Quincy will be positioned to be the first place we can put battery electric buses uh, in once we feel like the technology is in the place uh, we need it today. Is that your wife? No, no, it's not. No. <laughs> it's not his wife. <laughs> Sullivan. I have a question. We're on 10th Street. We've been in business 124 years in Quincy. You look good for a 120. <laughs> <laughs> I was there when it started. Um, we've been on 10th Street 80 years. Can it? Mm -hmm. uh, the whole gang. I saw a lot of heads nod when I said can it. Okay. My question is do people are expecting us to upload and move somewhere? 
Now, I've got almost an acre of granite. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Over an acre. Uh, of granite there. And how can you expect us to up and move our company to, to God knows where? I mean, you've given me questions like, not me personally, but uh, well, you must know someone that can move that granite. It's been there a hundred years. No, I don't. I haven't been looking. And can I jump in and ask you a question? What What's the premise that you have to leave? At me? What's the yep. premise that you have to leave? Why do you think you want to know about buying the property? Okay. See, I didn't know that. So yeah. the, the T was interested in buying your property. Okay. <clears throat> and and my question was, why do we have to get off Penn Street? And I asked them about the tenants across the street. They're going to stay there. That's okay. Are they going to take an acre from us? I mean, that's not right. What to park your buses? All right, so we are. You guys are paying taxes currently, right? Correct. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, so Claire, so d just in response to that, so we, uh, as part of our site search, we identified the Lowe's property that was the site that, that interested us, and we started to explore how we would operate a, a bus maintenance facility on that property. We need a second means of, of egress from the site if we're going to do that, so I think that's why, that's why the real estate department has, has reached out to CAV um, to, to sure start. I don't have to take an acre of our property for egress. So yeah, where would so the egress we, be then? You, you, you would come down Penn Street? No, we're looking to try to get a second means of egress from Bergen Parkway. Oh, 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 that'd be a smart move. That's well, years ago, so you had that egress from Bergen Parkway. Yeah. In uh, low spot, what they call it, the right uh, easement rights. Uh, for, for us to go through there, one as we we closed off that um, Penn Street end. Yes. Yeah, we did that. So now it's really hitting us in the face. Now you won't open it up again. Why can't you open it up from that end? Yeah. So I think what we need to do is we need to look. We need to look at the concept for how we would get our our buses in and out at that location. I think we need to sit down with you and understand your business at that location. Understand. You know, if we if we if we do need to purchase some of that property, is it the full site? Is it a portion of it? We need to. I think we just need to sit down and, and work with you on that. I think we and we need to come back to the community and let and let the community know what the as we as we develop a, a, a conceptual design that we can then show to the community and see how this all lays out. Um, you know, we're happy to do that. As well, well, I like what you're saying, Scott. That you're gonna you're gonna work with these people to see if they want to sell their property. But will you commit now to not taking their property, a Quincy business, by eminent domain? No, I, I can't commit to that now. Yeah, that's no. uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so yeah. this yeah. would take it by eminent domain. Yeah. Just uh, we, <coughs> we, yeah. This is all yeah. new information yeah. Yeah. that you're yeah. yeah. trying to buy their property <laughs> and that you're yeah. trying to make a second entryway to Bergen Parkway. And let me yeah. just take a brief moment here because I'm annoyed by this that I'm finding out information <laughs> for the first time in the community. And I have to say, from my experience with the MBTA, you guys have always done things and then talk to people afterwards. Like when you were going to take the Home Depot across the street by eminent domain. We found out, because Home Depot called us and said, hey, why are they trying to take my property by eminent domain? No communication with, uh, I believe, the state delegation, the mayor's office, the city council. It was the same when you guys decided you were gonna close down the garage entry from uh, Route 3 South, and you were going to redirect all of that traffic in the morning into the garage in Mount Bergen Park. I found out about it, and I had to call the Patriot Ledger in order to get someone from, from the, the MBTA to call me back and have a discussion about it. So you guys are always taking steps, moving forward, disregarding the community and anybody else's opinions and how they feel about things and then talking to them after you make your opinions, after you make your decisions. It's a very uncomfortable position for me to be in, and you know, I think these folks deserve better than that. You know, they deserve better than that. I mean, that, that's not right. That's, you're not dealing with people fairly. What you know, go ahead, sir. What would, if, if they would take a property like that and give us the lowest amount Money I'll give you the name of a, uh, the, the premier 
eminent domain taking attorney in the state. After we talk, I'll give you the guy's number. He'll squeeze them for every dollar they have. <laughs> what can you stop them from taking the homes across the street from They could do that. They could do that. I just, concert. I think these folks might want that if they're coming in. Go ahead. Concert. Uh, just, just, just two points on that. I think that I, I can't speak for real estate deals that did or did not happen uh, in the past. I've, I've been involved in this program. I think whenever the MBTA expresses an interest in, in private property, I think we have to be very sensitive and careful about how we start to engage and talk about that. We can't simply be, you know, we, we, I think we reached out to, I think our real estate team reached out to Canf. We've, we've worked to try to set up meetings. I know there's, it, there's, there's been travel that has prevented us from maybe sitting down before this meeting. Um, our first conversation always wants to be with the private property holder before we take that conversation out because it can, it can damage your, your property value if we start to signal we're interested in the site and then ultimately don't follow through. So I think that's, that's, that's what we've been waiting for is an opportunity to sit down with you and Jake, we're going to... James Rush uh, reached out to us. Uh, he went to the office in Rosendale. And um, I've been talking to him. But I mean, you know, it's not... I, there's just so much. No, I, I, no I, I appreciate it. It's, it's whenever this conversation happens on any project, it's not something that the private property owners typically excited about or, or, or welcoming, but I think our our commitment is to try to talk to the property owner first and have that meeting with you before we would even before we would even let Councilor Palmucci know or others. We want to make sure we've had a chance to talk with you before we take that broader. And I, and I would just say on another point, this is we are at, we are not even at 15% design for this project. This is about as early as we would ever go out to a community to talk. So I, I, I just want to... The only reason you're out here is because your press aide called the le sent an email to the Patriot Ledger to announce that this was the selected location. And then I scrambled to send these folks a letter to say, because I've been telling them for a year now that, hey, listen, as soon as I hear something, I'll let you know. You guys jumped the gun, released it to the ledger, said you were doing this, and then now we're all playing catch up. So the reason why you're here so early is by your own doing. You had a question up there, sir? Yeah, I got two questions. First, if you were to build a uh, facility, would it be who built it? You would get involved. Would be non -union. Second question is, are you going to move that off ramp, on ramp rather, that they just put in, where your buses would come out and pretty much hit it if they took it up, right? This is the off ramp. Um, I, I don't see the traffic being an issue because there's more when both was there, personally. Yeah. Well, if there was more when both was there, they wouldn't be closed, but. <laughs> he has two questions. One is going to be you heard the question. Yeah. No, no, you only said two. Well, the intimate domain thing, I think, is funny. Coming from, coming from a Quincy official, when they took all those houses in North Quincy to build a soccer field. By agreement. <laughs> By agreement. By agreement. You know what we didn't have is people I knew a sitting. That I'm sorry? I knew a couple that weren't where it's trying to go. Okay, well, when it, when it came to my desk, they were in agreement. One, prop, one property wasn't. Right. I think it's a beautiful project. All right, anybody else have any questions, sir? Go oh, away, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I'm Hugh Robb, representing Quincy Climate Action uh, Network. We've got a bunch of members here tonight, and uh, we're very excited about the prospect of battery electric buses. Uh, the city's air quality has gotten poorer and poorer. We've got more development that's followed by more traffic. We also have people all day rush hour on I-93, and I've been here 27 years, and I can't say that the air quality has ever been worse. So battery electric buses uh, will be a big help. What I'd like to know is, um, I'd like to get some numbers. Uh, when you open that facility, how many of the old style diesel buses are going to have? How many battery electric buses? How many uh, of the uh, uh, hybrid diesel? which are a small improvement, but they're not a huge improvement. They're about a 30% improvement. So uh, uh, we really need a big improvement here. And uh, uh, I'd, like, I'd like to hear those numbers. Thank you. I think he's answered that a couple times. He said when, by the time they open it, it'll be four years when they're on their plan to go to an entire uh, electric fleet. Right? Yeah, so in four, in four years, we need to retire the buses that we have at Quincy today. Those are the oldest diesel buses we have. So. At a minimum, we'd be we'd be rolling out hybrid hybrid diesel buses, 
and the facility would be equipped to accommodate battery electric buses if we felt the technology was there um, in four years to be able to start procuring uh, a, a fleet to fill this facility. Hold on a second, we're gonna go, we'll, we'll, we'll come back around you. Can take it. Go ahead. Hi. So, Penny and Sylvia, I live on the Tabor Street right behind the white fence at Lowe's. I just want to know both from MBTA and Councilman, <coughs> what are we going to put to for a safety um, issue for pedestrians going through that parking lot and through that line at the deck? Because, for example, the other day I was taking my goddaughter and I already got, we almost got hit by the bus the other day. They're speeding down Bergen Parkway and heading towards Quincy Center and that traffic in the morning is ridiculous. So I just want to know what you're going to put over there to make sure our, our <coughs> the community that's taking those, your transportation to go to work, school, whatever, to make their, sure they're safe. Because I don't feel like getting hit by a bus whenever I walk through there. I really don't. And there'll be 120 of them, you'll have to dodge. Yeah, and I don't feel safe walking there with my 12 year old when she has a 12 year old goddaughter. She is already like, scared to go through there. So imagine 120 buses. I just want to know what you're going to implement to make sure that pedestrians, people that are using your transportation, make sure they're safe. Yeah, no, uh, definitely, uh, Gabriela. So one thing I mentioned up front is, is we know that um, both the site comes with obligations to allow um, members of the community to, to, to pass through to get to the Red Line Station. And certainly, uh, the MBTA has a strong interest in making sure people are able to act, continue to access our service. Um, we don't think cutting through um, the parking lot, as, as currently happens, is the safest way to, to manage that, and it's probably not an option uh, given the requirements we have to, to build under uh, with one of our facilities. But we think there's an opportunity to to extend the park space that exists on the Columbia um, Columbia Road side and kind of bring that around the edge of the property um, over to the Deco apartment building. So we're looking at we're looking at a treatment like that that would provide more of a pedestrian pathway um, over to the intersection. And then, as we've said. There'll, there'll need to be a rigorous traffic analysis as part of our environment, required environmental review, and as part of that, we'll understand um, what, if any, mitigation needs to happen at that at that intersection. At the, at the yeah, because like that gentleman said earlier, people speed the bus speeding on Hancock Street just to test it on Center Street. Bergen Parkway at seven in the morning, it's filled all the way back to the lights right before the highway entrance, and people just walking through there. Next thing you know, you get hit by a bus, a car, whatever. So that's just more the concern than anything than really, because that light stays green and it says, oh, the pedestrian may cross at the same time. So I just wanted to see what both city and MBTA would put. Yep. Even if you don't put something on Columbia Street and do it around, if unfortunately you have to keep that fence open for people to go. Yep. Yeah, so this will this will be part of the traffic analysis. And as I said, we, we're, we're expecting to come back and present that information, that analysis to you once we've done it, so we can try to have better answers to questions like that. And talk to me after, because I, I thought that was a safe crosswalk there, no, so no. I want to hear your feedback about that. Three times already. Yeah, we can, we can probably do this. Uh, I'll come to you next. Okay, good. Sorry. Hi, what, hi Kevin from Liberty Street. Uh, what's the budget on this, roughly, and how's it get funded? All right, so uh, the we don't have a cost estimate for this garage yet. Like I said, we're we're pretty in pretty early days in terms of the design process. Uh, over the next month, as we start to flesh out the design, uh, we expect to have a cost estimate um, that we could that we would then make public as part of our you know 15, 30 percent design process. Um, so we're not able to give a number uh, yet. Um, we do have money budgeted in the MBTA's five-year capital investment uh, program to start uh, doing work on, a, on, on the Quincy facility and a couple of our other facilities. Um, and the funding sources, they'll, they'll vary as we go through the, the life of a project like this, but it'll be a combination of, of federal uh, funds and state bonding, and there'll be a, a couple different funding sources, most likely. Um, so I thought mention earlier, I'm um, so this is, I, I do not like this. Um, my residents are going to be my number one concern. Um, with noise, congestion, pollution, my residents have to live with a bus service station next to them. I know you're saying that it's all going to be inside, but still, there's going to be 120 buses going on a road that me and you are going to be sharing that my residents are going to have to deal with it. What are your plans to ensure that 
ensure that there's no disruption in <coughs> their life. Right. So, uh, well, a couple of things. I think one thing we, I think the deco apartments is a, is certainly another angle when we come back and start to show, give people a sense of what this facility might look like from different angles. I think that's an obvious one that we should come back and and um, include. Um, you know, I think when we do this traffic analysis, we'll actually have real information we can share and tell you when the traffic volumes are going to be and how heavy they're going to be and, and try to compare them back to what the Lowe's <coughs> condition was. Um, you know that's 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 something um, that we'll be able to do. And, and as I mentioned earlier, as we as we ultimately move to battery electric buses here, this is not going to be these are not going to be loud buses like the buses that we have kind of pulling out of Hancock Street um, on on the traffic. So we can give you more information in, in, in subsequent meetings, and we're happy to. I, I don't know if the Deco building has its own kind of tenants association meetings or anything like that. We're certainly happy to come and and do a deeper dive with the residents if that's something that you'd be asked for. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Michelle Hanna. Um, so you're, on, you're in the early stages of this planning and it sounds like you're dead set on this location in Quincy since you've already released it. And do you have any other plans to go elsewhere? It doesn't sound like you do. Are you exploring other options? It sounds like you weighed out your options and this is it. But do, is there anything else you're trying to explore? What are the reasons why they didn't work out? Yeah, so we, we are exploring a number of locations around Greater Boston to either build entirely new facilities, expand facilities we already have, relocate them. So this is not the only site we're looking at system-wide, but in Quincy, this is the site we've identified uh, that we want to move forward with the bus facility on. Um, my name is Joe, I live on Center Street, and to play off of what she asked, specifically not the entire system, but the Quincy garage we're talking about, why is it that this is a facility that has the potential to be a tax-paying retail facility, was retail already, okay? You want to turn it into this MBTA station, where I see Braintree as being way better for a lot of reasons. It sounds, like she said, it sounds like you're focusing on, on Quincy. Has any, have you looked at Braintree at all, done any study whatsoever? Because it seems to me that would be m such a great location for it. And we would ha end up with a tax paying entity at the Lowe's eventually. And that's a dump, former dump in a former hotel. You could have a ramp right off of Union Street for the buses and then have another exit on the uh, brink where the T side is for your buses going to Randolph and your buses going everywhere else. Take the highway, boom, they're, they're there. So why is it that that doesn't make sense? Yeah, I, I think that we looked at a number of locations. Some of them were some of them were no-brainers that they weren't going to work. I think there were a couple that looked potentially viable. This was, this was by far the best site for us in terms really? of Really? In this congested neighborhood, the, this, this was this better was. by and far? It, and I would just say that, and again, without without knowing what ultimately happens on Hancock Street, um, that that site, you know, once the, you know, once the MBK no longer needs it for a bus facility, if we decide we do not need it for some other use, there is the potential to have some property go back on the tax roll. So it's not, it's not, only a, only a negative um, up from that standpoint. Right, I'm sure the mayor's got one of his buddies already hooked up. For, for uh, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, 16 Living Street. We all know the mayor wants that property on Gamecock Street for the stadium. I mean, it's pretty heavy. Yep. Um, yeah. Um, what would be your hours of that in the, the timeline? Because I think it's going to bring down our property taxes. I think people that go to I mean, value. What are your hours? What is what is the? What are the, what are the, what are the hours that the facility is? Yeah, where is it now? Right, right. So, so I mentioned earlier that in terms of the flow of of buses coming in and out, our buses we try to get them out on the routes pretty early at the what beginning time? of rush hour. So around six in the morning might be when we're pulling buses out of the facility to get them out onto their routes, which means our, our employees um, are arriving you know, before that, our, op our bus operators are arriving before that. Um, so, so again, we, we're actually not a big competitor for roadway space during the peak, the peak of congestion periods because we're out 
we're out on the neighborhoods, we're out on Copeland, we're out on Hausnack, we're out operating service in the community <coughs> at those times. Um, it's, it's really before and after the peak periods where we're at our busiest. And, and again, the facility is entirely indoor, so in terms of work that's happening um, overnight, maintaining vehicles um, in the evening, in the morning, that, that work is happening inside and will not be, you know, will not be a noise, there will not be a noise impact, although, again, noise is another one of the um, analyses we need to do as part of our federal and state environmental review, so we'll be able to report back at a future meeting on what the potential noise impacts would be as a result of that analysis. Let me jump in with a question. Somebody had emailed me who couldn't be here. They were asking about um, if it's going to be entirely indoors, obviously obviously, there's gonna be some sort of ventilation system. Would, would that be a filtered ventilation system? Would that pose any pollution or odor um, problem for the, the area? Yeah, I think I, on this question, Councilor, I, I think we would, we need to get probably get a little bit deeper in the design process to understand what our ventilation needs are going to be for a facility that may only be there will be ventilation needs, but I think we need to try to understand what what that's going to be given. But, that but you do it at other facilities, you would have right? Yeah, so I think we can we can certainly come back with an answer. I don't apologize. I don't have one right, already. Fair enough. Um, I, um, I gave up on Powerpoint because I didn't like the way it was designed. And so I would like, I would love to see electric buses. I, I'd like to see more buses um, so that we can get around and less traffic. So I guess my question to you is, I mean, I, I, I visualize um, less traffic at Bergen Parkway because people will be taking buses. So would, would it be possible to have bus stops right there? Because right across the street at Quincy Adams, You've got a couple of buses that go there, like the 236, I think, and another one. Is there any way that you can have a bus bus stops there and pick up the people that are that are in that um, that housing there, but also people that live in the neighborhood? Because if we could cut down on the traffic, that would be wonderful, especially with with buses that that uh, don't give off all these uh, pollutants. Where did you say you're on Columbia Street? Pardon? Where did you say you, you were on? You live on Columbia Street? No, I live in Wallace. Wallace, right. But, okay, but go ahead. I am one of 30% of seniors in Quincy that do not use cars. Yeah so, I would, uh, yeah, so I would say that um, right now the MBTA is undergoing another exercise called the Bus Network Redesign. It's, a, it's basically our, our, bus, our bus routes, the, the, the bus routes in Quincy and across the region look a lot like streetcar routes look like you know, 80 years ago. Like the, the network has not changed dramatically over the past century, even though the region has changed significantly in terms of where jobs are and where people are living. So we're undergoing an exercise right now called the Bus Network Redesign where we're trying to understand where, where there's a mismatch between where we're providing bus service and where the demands are today. So as part of that process, I think we are looking at opportunities to serve maybe quarters that aren't served today in Quincy or to, or to kind of channel service onto high demand quarters. That's, that's an exercise that's ongoing, um, that's ongoing today. Um, but as part of our project, you know, if, if there wanted to be a bus stop adjacent to our, our building on Bergen Parkway because there was a route there already and, the, and, we, and that, that would be the type of thing we could consider incorporating into the sort of design of the edge of the, of the site. But we're not going to be doing sort of route design as a part of, the, as a part of you know, this exercise. Thank you. In the back. Come on. I have two questions. On the electric buses, so you mentioned that you didn't, the technology doesn't exist yet for you guys to actually run these buses. So how are you building a facility that's meant to house electric buses where the technology for those electric buses doesn't even exist yet? No, the, te the technology does exist. I, I might have misspoken. I apologize. The, the, we, have, we have five or six of those buses on property today that we're running. They run great in the spring and summer and fall. We can charge them overnight and then we can go out and run our service and it's great. What happens is that as you get into the coldest months of the year, coldest two or three months of the year, we end up draining a lot of the back because we're trying to buy buses where there would be no diesel power at all on the bus, right? So um, you run into a situation where we're draining a lot of that battery power just to heat the vehicles. Um, so we need that to get better. We need that performance to get better before we'd want to commit to having an entire fleet of these vehicles. Or we would need to or we would need to look at something like auxiliary heaters where we would have one component of the bus that was using you know, burning fossil fuels on the bus 
and and that would you know we wouldn't be able to achieve our our stated goal of a zero emissions fleet, but it would allow us to kind of get the, the fleet much cleaner than it is today by running on batteries. So so the technology does exist. If it was Florida, the technology we'd have no concerns about being able to get there. Uh, but we just we don't want to commit that in 2024 we'll we'll necessarily be able to have 120 battery electric buses here because we just need to make sure we're confident enough in the technology that we can run the service all, all winter. I guess, is it, is it possible that in five years we just have all diesel buses running out of this facility? Mm -hmm. So our buses right now are the, the, all of our newer buses, the newest 700 buses we have are hybrid diesel buses, which are significantly cleaner in terms of emissions and, than, our, than our oldest diesel buses. Um, one thing that is clear is that between now and 2024, Quincy will only be getting our, our oldest diesel buses, those are, the, those are the only buses we're gonna be able to provide service with here because they're the only vehicles we can store and maintain out of Quincy. So when this facility opens, it will allow us to start to, you know, will allow us to retire those buses and replace them with whatever our cleanest version of the fleet is at that point, which will be at no worse than a hybrid diesel bus. And our hope is that it'll be battery electric buses as soon as possible. And this will be the only, when this facility opens, it'll be the only place in the MBTA system that can accommodate battery electric buses. And the governor and the MBTA's Focus 40 plan have identified a transition to zero emissions um, buses, you know, over the over the over the long term. So we're we're committed to moving in that direction and this will be the only facility when it opens where we could store and maintain them. So it would be the logical place for those vehicles to go as soon as we felt like we were confident we could run our service with them. Thanks for clarifying. Yeah, I got two questions. One question was one of my brothers asked a question. If this facility is built anywhere we decide we're going to build it, will you consider a project labor agreement to put uh, local people to work, train apprentices and journeymen on, on that bill that you're going to have? And my second question is the way of air base, loaded with space, Roadway development on 53. They spent millions of dollars on mass, mass, uh, mass highway over there. Have you ever looked over there? Do you have real service to your, uh, to your, to your, uh, to your use on our house? Yeah, so again, this, uh, you know, I had a slide that showed the way the Quincy network, the, the, the routes that we run out of this garage. Um, you can tell from looking at that map that the current location on Hancock Street is a great place for garage. This, this location at Lowe's is a great location. The best location would be right in down, the heart of downtown Quincy and Quincy Center, but there's not a lot of room uh, to play with down there. So it's, it's, it, to have the facility in Weymouth would be a really inefficient, the, the T would be spending tons and tons of money just running empty buses for, for miles to get where they need to go. Um, Getting back to my union question, yeah. would it be a yes or no? Yeah, so I, 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 I unless uh, one of my colleagues, I think uh, Chief Engineer Eric Studha. Uh, <coughs> yeah, thanks, Scott. Um, so Eric Studhoff, Chief Engineer for the MBTA. So uh, being a state agency, we are governed by public bidding laws. So uh, all of our uh, construction is, is governed by public bidding laws, which means at a minimum, that uh, that the they would be prevailing wage jobs. So um, we 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 certainly work with uh, union shop uh, contractors and non-union shop contractors alike. But any any non-union work is uh, is governed by those prevailing wages, which means they pay their workers exactly the same as what the uh, the, the labor agreements are for the unionized workforce. Uh, we are not allowed by law to uh, to change that unless there's a project labor agreement. Um, at this stage, it's too early to say that there would be a project labor agreement for a project like this. What I would say is we think this is going to be a significantly sized project that would most likely be a project that would uh, would only be uh, something within the, the grasp of a, of a unionized uh, contractor to, to get. It's not to say only, but it is to say that this is going to be a significantly sized project. Um, we don't know what the number. There was a talk about what the budget was, what the, what the cost estimate was, but uh, you know we are certainly thinking that this is this is you know certainly north of fifty million dollars, probably significantly north of fifty million dollars in terms of the amount of money that we'd be investing in this type of facility. So uh, when it's in that size of scale, there is only a certain cachet of contractors that are that are able to bid on something of that size. And, and typically, they're unionized uh, workforces. Thank you. 
Sarah, over here in the hat. I, I live in the, the Deco building, and honestly, this is probably, of all the possibilities that we could have had there, it's probably like my worst nightmare. So right now, you're saying that this is a maintenance facility where buses are gonna be going in there, fire buses, but even right now, we have buses that are parked in that Lowe's, and when they break down, they come in on tow trucks. So now, when all these buses break down, they're not gonna be coming through on tow trucks, they're gonna be loud, we're already near the, the T station. It's going to be a complete nightmare. And now I'm hearing about in, intimate um, domain where you can buy people out. We, we are struggling fighting uh, amongst residents for parking. And we also have, um, we can see where people who are taking the train are coming in our like five spots that we have, parking there and walking across the street. When those were there, they were our very good neighbors. They knew that we, we, we had a problem with parking, if we needed to park there for a couple of minutes, if we had guests or something like that, it wasn't people just coming in towing us every every two seconds. So I don't see any positives at all. I know there's people around the neighborhood, but we're literally right there. I see absolutely no positives for us, and I, I'd like you to explain what can we uh, expect um, that's positive for us. All right, easy. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think, I think we, 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 we commit to a dialogue with, uh, you know, with, with your building. I think we're, we're happy to come out and, and give you updates and kind of talk through the design as it advances. I mean, I think one thing that, you know, in, in an ideal world, we probably would have been doing this program 20, 25 years ago, because I think you did this 20, 25 years ago. You think about all the places in the region that where there's housing now, where there wasn't housing 20, 25 years ago, there's very few places all of our facilities tend to be in older industrial areas that are now in the very attractive sites for developments. So this is a this is an issue we'll run into everywhere we 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 try to modernize an existing garage and build a new one. There's not really many places left we can go that are proximate to where our bus service is that isn't either already developed with uh, with adjacent uses like housing or where developers aren't targeting them for that. But at the end of the day, we have four you know we have over four hundred thousand close to half a million people a day that are relying on bus service to get around the region. It's your neighbors, it's people all across Quincy, across the region. We need to find a place, we need to be able to maintain our buses and run bus service. Um, and, you know, that's that's why we're here, yeah. Just as an aside to that, right, maybe I've been, maybe I've been doing this too long, but I know some other folks are in the room, like Donna, Ray, Rosemary. Remember when the folks were telling us when they wanted to build Deco, don't worry, no one will need the parking. They only had 90 spaces. Oh, don't worry, everybody's gonna take the T. They don't need parking. They got 180 spaces over there and they're fighting over space. Some things pop up, right? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so um, what is the tendency, okay, if that is not a type of E, what is the tendency of D to have in mind? So, I, yeah, so I think there's a lot of sort of unpredictable steps that we have to go through to get there. I think so we're, we're, we're trying to back into a date, which is we, we feel like 2024 is the year that we would want to be able to have a new facility because we're not confident we'd be able to continue to kind of keep the fleet, the only fleet we'd be able to run out of Hancock Street running after that point. If we lose that facility and we don't have a place to go, we have to start making difficult decisions about it. Everybody's got two questions, apparently. So that's okay. The new standard, two is the new one. Could we put that on the ballot for, for elections and see what the citizens would want as, you know, see You can put anything on a ballot. I don't know that you need to, but put anything on a ballot. I think that is that very important. You know, we, we are all affected, and I think, you know, people would really like to say yes, you know. Yeah, you know. No, what's the earliest possible date you want on this? Like, did you plan on leasing it from who owns it now, um, and maybe buy it later, or do you have mint domain that site right away? I just don't know how that no, works. Why is there no recourse at this point aside from this? So we, we, we're in active conversations with the entity that controls the site today because we do have that near-term need for parking so we can expedite the brain tree and Quincy Adams garage project. So, a lot. so we have the lot and then we do have but we do have a lot of storage needs that we have where we where we are constrained in terms of our abilities to store parts and supplies. So we would be interested in using the building itself in its current state to store equipment for 
an interim uh, period. Um, but we, we are looking to acquire the site for the long term. There's a process we have to go through. I think that the term eminent domain is being thrown out. I mean, the way, the way that we do this is we're, we're trying to negotiate to buy the property and we're required to pay a fair market value for the property. So we will, we hire an appraiser, we hire a second appraisal company to check their work. The federal government then has to review that appraisal and confirm that we're paying fair market value. So we're not, this isn't, you know, like Robert Moses and like the, you know, coming in and just, just clearing people out. I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna have conversations with any uh, impacted property owner and, and, and try to reach an agreement that works. Real quick, in, in all of that property, Two you say no, you just say this, we're not doing this, or are they essentially at the mercy of you guys? I mean, the, the, the Commonwealth and the MBTA have certain rights under um, <coughs> Chapter 79 and so on that allow us to, 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 to ultimately take property if it's for the public benefit, um, which this facility allowing us to run cleaner buses and more, and more bus service um, is. We have to demonstrate that it's for the public benefit. Um, but again, we're, we are, we're always looking to work with the property owner. We're always looking to pay fair market value. We're doing that both for any short-term arrangement to access the site for interim uses and, and sort of for the long term. It's like negotiating with the mob. They'll give you a price, and if you don't want it, they'll just take it. That's what I mean. Yeah. Larry, go ahead. Uh, thanks. Uh, Larry Preachin, I live at North Central Ave, which is in the North Bay Wallace area. Um, so I'm sensitive to the neighborhood concerns. I, I'm not going to defend the site. That's your job to do that. Um, my observation would be, the best of all worlds would be we get the same bus service and you move it to Braintree or Weymouth. But, but if you're going to move it to Quincy, you get the Hancock Street facility is not, is not going to last more than four years. I get that part. Um, to go anywhere else in Quincy, you're going to need a, a sizable site. Um, and it's going to move, it's, you're going to be taking the uh, property uh, off the tax rolls no matter where you go if you stay in Quincy. That's, that's an observation I'm making which is relevant to, I guess, the T and to the mayor's office. I think it's somewhat important. Um, my, I work for a group called Green Energy Consumers Alliance that wants to see more electric buses everywhere. Um, I drive to uh, Jamaica Plain every day. I get stuck behind the 215, which has to be the dirtiest bus in the United States in terms of the pollution that it spits out. I put that on Twitter. I get remarks back that you're gonna look into it. Doesn't seem to happen. What I'm trying to say is, We've got four years of improving technology. I just think you have to take off the table the idea that four years from now you'll put in a diesel hybrid into the new barn wherever you go in Quincy because I, I want to be more optimistic about the electric buses perhaps than you have. They're, they're, they're riding in Oslo, Norway, which is a lot nastier than here. Edmonton, Edmonton, Alberta, Winnipeg, Canada. Um, you name it, they're all, all over the United States, including in Worcester and Martha's Vineyard, all kinds of places where the, the, the weather is cold, they're functioning pretty well, it's part of the system. The public health benefits are actually bigger than even the climate change benefits. The reality is the MBTA is not responsible for the health impacts you have with dirty diesels. So we all have to understand that as we look to the purchasing decisions that you make. So I'm just saying it will take a little bit of a sting off no matter where you go. You the idea for the, for the workers who work in the facility, to be working on electric buses, it's a lot healthier than the diesel buses and for the surrounding community. So um, wherever you cite it is not my call. But when you cite it, uh, I really, four years from now, the technology will be so much better than even today. As you probably know, the cost of the electric bus is going down about 10, 15% per year because the battery technology is getting cheaper and performance is getting better. And so I think that's really important. Were you on the city council once? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a, Me? Yes, you. Right. When you talk about diesel, I'm, I, I just got here. Are you talking about Welcome. Uh, natural gas? Are you talking about actual fuel? Yeah, so our oldest buses, buses I believe, are running on just diesel, uh, diesel, diesel fuel. The buses that we run out of Quincy today on Hancock Street. So the, the, at the beginning, during the presentation, sir, I, I explained that um, due to the physical constraints of the Hancock Street garage, we're only able to operate our oldest buses out of that facility. And those buses are, the, the youngest of them is 11 years old. So we're, the, the clock's kind of ticking on how long we can they continue. Won't be natural gas. 
Yeah, no. So what we're moving to, we have, we have, we do have some CNG buses in other parts of the network, but we've been moving the authority towards a diesel uh, hybrid fleet is kind of what we've been moving towards. Um, and as, as I've been saying tonight, the, the aspirational goal is to move to battery electric bus technology as the gentleman was just, was just talking about. I, I have other questions, but I don't think that's... Well, you get two. You get two. You get another one? Well, no, no. It's just not for this meeting. Just, okay. Did they have a layout yet? Or how you no, not yet. They're working on it. They'll come back with one. Yeah, so you'll get me next time. Yeah. All right, trying to get people who haven't spoken yet. I'll come back. Uh, you. Yes, I'm Katie Pan. Um, I was just wondering, you keep bringing up fair market value, fair market value. If you're a route, routing company or different things, there's other values outside of just the fair market value. You know, you have to uproot an entire company. There's um, stuff located on the property. There's the building itself. It's the employees who now have to travel further to work where, from where they are before. It's creating a new facility. It's essentially what you guys are doing, mm -hmm. how would you, you know, how would you address that? Can I just jump in? It's such not a question. <coughs> the lawyer I'm going to give you is going to answer all those questions, okay? Don't, you don't want his answer to that, because his answer is different than what your lawyer is going to get for an answer. Uh, go ahead, here, man. Thanks and love. Uh, So I can answer that it's it's not right. So I don't. Can you go back and slide? Yeah. Um, can you go back to the one that had the yellow circle, yeah. the yellow line around? It didn't touch the Lincoln Monument project uh, uh, site, which is on the corner next to the. Uh, this is uh, this is the Lincoln Monument site here. Yeah. Okay. So that was the one we were talking about. But that's all the river. Before. So this here is just uh, is all part of this same site. This is Deco, obviously. Uh, it doesn't quite go to Center Street, but uh, this is the ramp that goes up. So this is where you would cross down here. But that's all owned by Brewster. But isn't all that Town Brook? A, a lot of it's Town Brook that comes through, and comes up the block here, and goes through there. Are they going to take that too? Well, I, I think they would take yeah. everything. What they can do is a different story, right? Because Town Brook. <coughs> hold on, hold on, Sam. Sorry. I mean, just did that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And we're working on that project. I'm really excited about the Lincoln Monument. We try, try and do a park there. Try and get people to access. Um, the better crosswalk, which I understand we need to make some improvements on, but so that they wouldn't cross. <laughs> so we're still working on that. Sarah, the Marine. Right. Okay, go ahead. So, would this picture be not then? That's why I called one, because I knew you wanted to go. <laughs> um, the land that is running behind my building currently is not being maintained. Um, is there any Right. So I, again, we're you know, we're very early in the in the conceptual design thinking of the actual bus facility. I'll be I'll be frank with the how that sort of ribbon of land along Town Brook gets treated is has probably not where we've been focused thus far. But I think that's the type of discussion we you know we we would love to have with the Deco folks when we uh, when we meet when we meet with you down the road once we've done some more. Yeah, so certainly we're going to have an interest in making sure that road is in good repair and, and, and functions. I, you know, I, I think we need to learn a little bit more about um, about ownership and how we maintain that. But I think that's something we can come back with, with answers on. Yeah. Morning to you. I, I cut you off. Are you going to take the same building there where it is next to the highway? So um, right. So what I, what I mentioned earlier, Rosemary, is the is the. Um, the uh, White Maureen is the the town brook runs through the site, um, yeah. sort of right in front of the Lowe's and a, and a culvert. So the Lowe's building is kind of where it is to, to sort of avoid that, and, and they've got the park on the other side. 
as, as we've looked, as we've started to look at it, we think we'd, we'd probably go with the same program. So our bus facility building would, would be roughly the footprint where the Lowe's building is, and then our employee parking would be where the customer parking for Lowe's was. That's probably the way we would yeah. we would lay it out because I don't think we want to. We can't really be over the brook no. with the with the building. No, no and we don't want it up against the neighborhood. Right. Yeah. No, you would think that. that yeah. I understand yeah. your position on it. Yeah. Right. Uh, two questions on the phone. No, that's three. <laughs> no, I have two questions. Whittle it down. Whittle it down. Um, so you're going to be a 24 hour operation, most of your business when we're home from work. 24 hour operation. No, we're 24 7. Yeah, so the main. So main, the main is, day, yeah. You're going to be there working. When we're at home. That's right. I believe all of our, not all of our facilities. Your rush hour is after the home. Yeah. That's like five questions. No, that's fine. Okay. Well, oh, that's still one question? That's yeah. One question. It was like yeah. count? No, Go ahead. No, cer yeah, certainly in order to maintain buses the same way when we maintain, you know, when we try to get out there and fix the red line, we, we need to do that when <laughs> our customers aren't looking to use the services. So we do we do maintenance work all throughout the day, but, but certainly also use the overnight window to, to maintain buses so we can get them running, uh, you know, running during the day for our customers. Going, going to electric buses, uh, where are the high tension towers going to go and feed those? Yeah, so we need, we, need, we need substations, we need to talk to the utilities, we need to bring a lot of power onto the site. That's oh, a great, Evolve National Grid, yeah. my other favorite. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so those are, convers those are conversations we're, we're trying to schedule now uh, to understand um, understand how we would make that work, but that's something we'll, we'll need to do. And, and as we come back with plans, we can show you where we're with us in the site. Um, site that is right. You wanted to finish with a comment? Part, since the teal on land on both sides of Virgin Pathway, we can get a footbridge. I think it's worth asking. Yeah. Moving sidewalk. Instead of taking this family's property, why don't you take Home Depot behind Quincy Adams when there's a Home Depot a half mile away? Well, you want to build a storage facility next to the Quincy Adams. We're gonna let him. We're gonna get his question answered, and then I'll come right over to you. Okay? Right. right. There's. I mean, why won't you take the Home Depot instead of going after this family's property? And it's right there. You don't have to do new ramps or anything. Home Depot could move to where Lowe's is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> or put the storage facility you want to put next to the Quincy Adams Station. We've all heard the storage facility wants to go in there. Yeah. Why not put the storage facility where Lowe's is and put your garage on the other side of Quincy Adams T? No. Yeah, so we so we we, we looked at a range of sites uh, as I mentioned. Uh, I think that sure. obviously one of the one of the benefits of this site I think was having the Lowe's um, business be be vacant. That certainly makes this. A, a but you have a vacant lot next to the Quincy Adams T, where apparently a storage facility wants to go in. There's not enough land. Right there. I don't think there's enough land up there unless you were taking the home. I think you would need to clear the Home Depot out well, altogether. Right. 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 Right, so a lot of them, are, are, the level of service we provide does drop off quite a bit after the end of the morning rush hour, so usually around 9.30, 10, buses would be starting to come back to the facility. Um, a lot of those would then go back out again around 3, or as school, the school day ends, that's when we kind of ramp back up again. And then at the end of the day, buses would start kind of coming back to the facility around 6.30, 7 is when you start to see them come back. But they would trickle back in all night because we do run we do run service on, on most of the routes in Quincy until the end of the service day but, but usually not more than a bus or two per route um, so it's fewer buses out of the road. Okay. To me of what I'm hearing it seems like basically this is not you say you're dead set on this property but it just seems like a concept really because whenever we ask questions you're kind of just gearing towards a different direction and getting us off of the main topic. You say that you're going to put 100% um, electric battery powered, non-diesel fueled powered buses there. But when the gentleman behind me asked you that, you said, oh, um, we're trying to get buses there by 24. You say you're all 100% eco-friendly, but how can you promise that when you just said that you're going to put a hybrid 
uh, fuel buses there. Hybrid yeah, so I, I, I apologize because I'm trying to be pretty pretty clear with that. Um, our we this will be the first and only facility we have if, if we if, if, as it moves forward that can accommodate battery electric buses. We are committed as an authority to move towards zero emissions fleet. That's something that's a goal that we're moving actively moving towards. Um, I've been very careful because if this project were to move forward six months faster, a year faster, then then maybe we would conservatively estimate, or if the technology for battery battery electric buses goes advances a little bit more slowly, we, we're not in a position to commit that on day one it would be an all battery electric bus fleet. So I, 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 if I said anything that suggested anything other than that, I apologize. Yeah, um, like but it, but but I, what what is true is that the only buses we can run in Quincy today are dirtiest, oldest buses, and that will change when this facility. Like I said, it still looks like a concept and not a full set idea. And you just promised something, but you can't even tell our own councilman in advance. You basically <coughs> just said it to the newspaper before he even knew. So it's like we can't even trust if we put in theory you are going to be there. How are we going to be able to trust you guys and make sure if a situation comes up, you're going to follow through with whatever we decide? So on, on the topic of the battery electric buses, we... No, we let's go to the topic of you guys being a good community partner and being trustworthy. That's a good one. So uh, we, we are out here right now very early in the process. I mean, that's, that's part of probably where I think a lot of you are asking questions that are very good questions that we don't have answers for right now because we are very early in the design and development of what this facility will look like, how it will operate, um, frankly, even the exact quantity of buses that it, can, that it can house. We are not fully designed yet. It is not, it is not fleshed out to even a place where we can show you renderings yet where what, the, what this facility will look like. So we, we feel like we're very early. This is, this is very early in the process to engage the community and to repeat the engagement with the community, as Scott has mentioned, that, that we are certainly committed to doing. Uh, on, the, on the point of battery electric buses, I just want to you know, double down on what Scott was saying and explain you know, just again. Uh, <coughs> we have five all battery electric buses right now that, that take no fuel other than we plug them in and we charge up the batteries. We bought those with a special grant so that we can test them in our environment. Uh, the New England environment, I mean, there are other buses in, in Oslo and, and other places around the world that are not completely 100% battery electric buses. They have uh, other generators that are on there that, that run on other type, types of fuel in order to run things like HVAC, cooling in the summer, heating in the winter. We are putting that battery electric bus technology through its paces in our environment with our service so that we can understand when the technology and what the technology is that can serve our public right now today so that we can then start planning for what those buses look like. Right now today, we know that we don't think the five buses that we have are gonna be able to be the technology that replaces diesel electric hybrid buses going forward. The technology for battery electric buses needs to evolve from where it is right now. What we don't know is we don't know if that's a five-year proposition, if that's a two-year proposition, or if it's a 10-year proposition. We, we are not driving the technology of the buses. The industry is going that direction. Um, you, you look at all of your technology that runs on batteries, it's all getting better by leaps and bounds every single year. We are hopeful, like the rest of you, that we get to a place where we can activate on battery electric buses as, as rapidly as possible. But today, right now, we cannot commit to what that near certain is when that will happen. Um, but certainly the commitment is that we will get there as efficiently as we think we can get there and as prudently as we can so that we are not in a position where the battery electric buses we run out there are in a place where the service day gets cut by several hours because the batteries just don't have the range to give the type of mileage that, that we would need uh, in order to provide the service, the same level of service that we provide today. Let me just kind of, <clears throat> some sort of summary conclusion on just that point. Just say to you guys that I think it's very clear from our friends from Wellston who are here because they support uh, uh, environmental betterment and our, our neighbors from South Quincy that whether this happens or whatever, but if it moves forward, we, we all would like to see uh, battery buses, electric buses, 
So, I mean, that needs to be, as we have these conversations, we have another conversation, we don't want diesel. We don't want diesel there. I know you can't commit to it, and I'm not asking you to, but I'm telling you resoundingly, this community, Quincy, wants environmentally friendly buses at this depot if it's going to happen. on where we think we're at. Yeah, sure. Uh, we will have, I will have uh, another individual here that can talk about the bus technology and the performance of those five battery electric buses that, that we have in testing. They've been in testing since uh, May, June time frame. So we've gone through kind of a mild summer and a pretty mild winter. And I, teaser, it, it's not looking great right now. Uh, but, um, but so part of what the design is, uh, is a, is a, is a big, a big throat of electricity that will come into this facility to to feed a substation capable of charging all 120 buses or 140 buses, where we end up in terms of the total number of buses that we can house at this facility with electricity, so that they could be battery electric when when the technology is there. Okay, and I know Chris Walker left the room, the mayor's chief of staff, but I. I've had conversations with the mayor. I know he said the same thing. To the he serves on like the fiscal management board of the T. I know he has made that same request about um, uh, the electric vehicles and getting rid of the diesel. May I look at that? Um, I'm all for environmentally friendly uh, public transportation. Um, I think it's a big thing, you know, for MBTA. Um, but. Uh, what I'm seeing here is that there are a lot of negative points of this um, project you want to to build here. Um, it's uh, it's, it's uh, causing problems. It's going to cause problems in mobility for pedestrians. It's going to cause problems with properties for the members of the community. It's going to cause problems with tra transit uh, uh, traffic, right? And um, I don't know, uh, there are like several points in which there are negative uh, issues that have to be addressed, right? So the, the question is, it, now it seems like um, we have to take it, we, we like it or no, or not, like it or not, we have to take it because it's MB, MBTA. So the question is, how, how can you commit, what, what can you commit? Like, um, is, is this, uh, is you're just telling us what you're going to do? Is, is, it sounds like that. Or what, can you commit in something, right? Like, um, how the uh, pedestrian mobility is going to be solved? How, how each of these problems are going to be solved? I think that would be a, a good thing for you know, because it's, it's, a good, uh, it's a good intention, you know, this um, uh, public transportation is very important for, for, for everyone now. Yeah, no, certainly, and I think that um, when it comes to things like traffic <laughs> and pedestrian safety, I mean, these are things that we have to evaluate thoroughly as part of our requirements under state and federal law, and there, again, it's, it's analysis that we, we will bring back to, to all of you, as as Eric mentioned, you know we're you know we're very early in the process. So there's just a lot of questions we we're not in a position to answer yet, but we're committed to coming back um, and and answering them. Um, and I think that you know, and again, I think again, and this is this doesn't speak to the sort of like local adjacency issue, but certainly I think the 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 fact that we're able to expand the number of buses uh, in Quincy, if we do think it's going to have positive benefits for congestion in, in the city of Quincy. Um, these, this, this garage isn't serving, like I said, it's not serving you know, um, West Roxbury, Brookline, other parts of the, the region. It's serving primarily Quincy. So if we're able to expand the fleet by 30, 40% of this facility, that's gonna give us the ability to try to provide more, more and better service in Quincy to try to help address congestion and traffic issues in that way. Uh, the T is suggested using privatized jobs on new bus routes. And many of the jobs in this facility, whether they're bus operators or maintenance workers, be private jobs or would they be on union state jobs? The Carmen's union get a hold of you out in the hallway? No. <laughs>
Yeah, so this is, we, we are relocating our existing facility on Hancock Street here in terms of the, the workforce. So that's, that, that is the plan to kind of move that workforce over to this facility. And, and that's all local 589, local 264 workforce. Right here. Yep. Brian, I, I think we're maybe missing, but I, I sense I hear T Creek on this site. I think the T is intention. I think the T is creeps temporary too. parking. <laughs> Sorry. Is the T's intention to use the low site as temporary parking? If so, how could they do that without doing any traffic studies? Right. And two, on the property taxes, <coughs> is that just money gone or is there any way the T is going to make a <coughs> payment in lieu of taxes to the city <coughs> in consideration of the impact they're going to have on the local neighborhood? Good questions. Uh, the first, the answer is they're the government and they outrank us, so they do what they want. We get it done to us, right? So that's why they can do it without a traffic study or whatever. If it was any other business, if it was any, if it was Lowe's, if it was Market, I mean, if it was uh, uh, Amazon, Market Basket, Michaels, whatever it is, there'd be a process and there'd be a public process. And they'd, they'd have to do traffic studies and they perhaps could. Uh, require a permit from the city council and there'd be hearings. The only way that doesn't happen is in a situation where it's, you know, the MBTA or, you know, uh, some other government agency. So what, what allows them to start using that as a parking lot? Just a lease? They want or they can just because do they it? Want to. They yeah. can do it tomorrow. Yeah, if, if they have site control, which they don't have, okay. if they get site control, they can... I mean, I, it's a problem. Well, I, I get concerned when I hear people making comments from DECO that buses are being towed there and people are parking there. It doesn't look like there's any site control from the T, and it looks like anybody's using that site. So there's a problem that they, with that site already, Brian. I, I think you know that. Yeah, I know. I agree. It's not. This is a new news. So. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I just want to emphasize that we, we do not have site control now. So in terms of things being towed there, that's not... That's not us. We do know that some of our customers are, are parking in the Lowe's parking lot. Um, again, we think by taking entering into an agreement with the current uh, with the entity that currently controls the site, so that we can have parking there on a temporary basis to expedite the uh, Braintree and Quincy Adams garage projects, that we can the MBTA can be more of a presence at that lot and and control what's what's going on. But we're not we're not currently in control of the site. We're going to go this follow this follow and then I'll... Right. Will you look over this way? Okay. Where? Will you look over this side? Where? Well, Ian, I'm going to let the actual residents talk and then the politicians talk. Okay. Um, Have you ever heard one of her comments? No offense, but, you know. Ooh. Ooh. Because we elected... She let reporters talk, Brian. Let her okay. speak. Probably, probably three questions. All right. Oh, three. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. Brian Hanson, Brian. So, you know, they mentioned sites and, you know, where you guys can go. I don't know if you know... It's specifically, they got to look at these, like when they mentioned um, the one in Braintree, um, Home Depot, you know, around there. Do you know yourself if they actually looked at those? And, and second, if, if not, if so, can you influence them, maybe talk to them or whatever and say, hey, prevent this meeting, they came out with some different ideas, you know, moving Home Depot and going here where there's no residents we can bother. Uh, this site here in Braintree has no residents around. There's a dump behind it. We can probably expand and uh, move there. Or is, is this it? Yeah. So as, as again, as, as part of the as as part of our upfront work on this, we knew we needed a new garage for Quincy. We did do a, a evaluation of a number of sites in the inner south shore in terms of the specifics i'm not entirely sure how how, how, how much of that uh, we can we can present tonight but i can certainly commit to coming back and giving as much detail as we're allowed on the sites that we did look at again i think as i mentioned earlier when we were talking about the can of property um, the mbta has to be very uh, careful about broadcasting that it's evaluating a variety of sites for a facility like this. It can have negative impacts on property values just by talking about a site that we're looking at and considering even if we ultimately never get serious about it. So it's something we're very uh, careful about, uh, but we did certainly look at a range of sites here um, from 
Randolph to Braintree, Weymouth, and, and, and up into, into into Quincy. Uh, and this was the this was this was the best site that we found. <laughs> Um, a lot of the points in your presentation would be applicable to really leveraging the existing asset of the Quincy Adams Red Line Station and bringing tr some sort of transit-oriented development in there and something that could transition um, um, more seamlessly and more naturally to, to the abutting neighborhood than acres of blacktop and um, a football-sized facility. Your proposal is disappointing for its lack of imagination for the, the potential value of that site. Amazon's pr proposal to come in here and slap another cardboard box down is an insult to, to the community. And the idea of uh, this unique asset that is abutting the existing um, public app, um, transit infrastructure <clears throat> disappearing from the tax rolls as opposed to um, transitioning into something that could add to the tax rolls and offer a diverse array of, of jobs as opposed to a bunch of workers who couldn't even actually take the subway to get to work because they need to work in off hours. Um, it is, I, I'm disappointed by the failure of imagination. I think it's an insult to this community and I will actively <coughs> oppose it by making my presence known with the people who control the capital investment. Oh, sure. uh, this is a horrible idea for, for this community. Even with the benefits of, the eventual benefits of the buses, but the incremental bus is the benefit of diesel uh, or the mixed use is, is nice, but, but small comfort and promises of future technology are um, that, um, that has no value in our capitalist economy. I'm sorry, take that somewhere else. But um, I think that the traffic study that you fund is gonna say what you want it to say, because this is not my first community meeting, this is not my first PowerPoint, it's not my first rodeo, and it's not gonna be my first week in traffic study either. Um, so, you know, I, it, it's, it's bad, and um, I will actively oppose it, and um, um, I, I think I'll win. <laughs> yeah, no, and I, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate the comments. I just want to, and I, 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 um, I just want to, so, so folks just not knowing how familiar folks are with the rest of the network. I mean, this is an issue we have, frankly, everywhere where we have these facilities. We've got a facility at Cabot, our, our largest, which is right next to the Red Line Station, one stop to downtown of the Financial District. We have another large one that's right across the street from Sullivan Station on the Orange Line, two stops from downtown Boston. We have one in the heart of the South End, which is one of our the most expensive neighborhoods in the city. We have one across the street from Forest Hills in Jamaica Plain at the Orange Line. So it's not, a, this is not the only place where somebody could argue there's a higher and better use for land adjacent to rapid transit. The end, the end of the day, we need to find a place to store and maintain a thousand buses that's somewhere in this very expensive, very built out region. Right. And we want more than a thousand buses because every community, including the city of Quincy, is asking for more and more bus service to kind of support the development growth. So it's a challenge, we're in a challenging spot. Um, and a simple box yeah. solution isn't an effective so solution. You know, that, I think that's the, the part of the central piece of the point that I'm making is that that, that is a failure of the imagination. Um, there, you know, there, there has to be a more creative way to, to, um, you know, uh, to, to find something that, that's a better solution that, that um, doesn't punish the abutters and punish the, the taxpayers, but, but finds a more effective balance. But, but Thank the you. existing idea doesn't hit that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one of the things you mentioned is you get a brand new substation and a brand new water electricity. This is really close to the residential neighborhood. You think in the health effect into account for the neighbors being so close. It's a lot of electricity. Yeah, so that's certainly going to be part of our environmental review, and that again, those conversations with the utilities, we, we need to have, we, we're having this meeting before we've had that conversation, we need to have those conversations, understand what's out there today, 
um, and, and, and yeah, but it's a big it's a big consideration here. It's going to be something we have to deal with at those other nine facilities I I showed earlier because the goal is to convert all of these facilities to, to battery electric bus technology. Would the substation be built on the property? <laughs> yeah. So I th again, we, we need to we need to sit with the utilities, understand uh, understand you know, what yeah issue. Yeah. I mean, it would need to be built somewhere near it, right? Are you trying to lift your arm up? Or put it down? <laughs> he certainly is. All right. One more I thought they were helping me. Go ahead. One more comment. Yeah. It sounds to me like the T has already made their mind up. This is where they're going. Regardless of the fact that we pointed out, Braintree is five minutes away. To take that land, that hotel is there. There's nothing but a mess right now in the dump behind it and that by eminent domain you would do the town of Braintree the hugest favor by getting rid of that stinky place for one you don't even want to take that under consideration this is where you're going you made up your mind you have not shown me one bit of information why Braintree isn't suitable for you oh it's five minutes away big deal you're taking all your cars now from the Braintree parking lot to Quincy parking lot is that a far travel? Far travel? No, it's not. A five-minute travel is not going to burn not one gallon of gas in the country. Don't go for that. It's too far away. You're willing to put a small business out of business. You've been here for years. Take their lane, but I have it as your name. But yet, oh my God, don't touch Home Depot, that multi-billion-dollar company, which you could take by eminent domain. You've already made up your mind. This is where you're going. You don't even want to open yourself up to go look at the other problems. Yep. That's wrong. 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 <laughs> That's all by itself. Set off by itself. You wouldn't affect anybody in any neighborhood. It would be quiet. It would be up there. There's a huge piece of property there. You could go there. But no, you chose this property. And the reason you got into this problem is because Stop and Shop would have blocked our market there to go in there, or you would have been Market Basket would have been nice. Market Basket would have been great. Stop and Shop would have made that, and we wouldn't be here tonight discussing, can we go there? You'd be talking about <coughs> going to take it at Home Depot by eminent domain. Very across the street from your station. No, no houses, nobody up that way, all by itself. That's where you need to go if you don't want to go to Frankfurt. All of that five minute travel. You need to reconsider where you're located there. You're putting too much traffic and too much pressure on the neighborhood. Those buses can just go about their business, come down the Bergen Parkway and go all the way up to Quincy Room without interfering with our traffic, our neighborhood, and the flow of traffic. That's what you need to do. I just wanted to add that there must be some incentive that could be given to Home Depot for them to move to the low site. There must be something they we don't want do. to move. They don't, they're a corporation. They don't want to move. Because that makes so much more sense. The, you think they care about the, you know, the situation? Well, getting in and out of there is a drag. It's hard to get in and out of that Home Depot. You sit at that red light for five minutes. So they would do better business on the low site. They don't think so, but... I've had the conversation yeah. with them. Just but that would be a much better interest. place for this bus facility. You know how right. often we've heard that one of them is going out of business? I'm sure you've heard it. You're like, oh, they're going out of business. Oh, they're not doing well. They're both doing great. Mm -hmm. Home Depot people love it. They love both locations. Sure. So they're not but they could move to the Lowe's location. Yeah, they don't want and to. And the bus facility would be in a much better spot where, Lo where Home Depot is. I don't <coughs> disagree, but Home Depot has no interest in doing it. And, uh, oh, well, thank you, Rosemary. That was one of my questions. Is National Rail, Na Na is it National Railway, what's the name of that? National, National Rail. Rail. And they, they did, they did come in and they were representing the stock and shop. So they've stopped, it's a monopoly stock and shop, not letting anything else come in to look at that site. Amazon's looking at it. We don't really know what their depth is of, of interest is in it. Um, well, if, if this is to go through and you're going, and the MBTA is going to be leasing this for Bruce Street Railway, how long before you think you'll purchase in 2024? We would we would hope to have the facility open by 2024 so that we can continue to run the, the bus service that we run out of the Quincy garage. So until you actually take over that site, we will get taxes on that site until that's true. Arguably. 
No, arguably, really. no, no, I'm telling you, arguably. Yeah. Because there's a method by which they could not pay taxes, mm -hmm. but. Well, they better be able to pay. They, but that should be part of the deal is that while you're leasing, we get taxes on that site. And the other question that I had is um, now, it's, it's well known that the mayor wants the site next to the stadium where you have your bus location. Um, has there been a deal made with the city as to whether or not the city of will get that location? No, we simply. So when that bus station gets sold to the city of Quincy for a dollar, should we all be surprised that that, that that happened after this deal goes through? And the second, other question for what's the what's the implication? My implication no, for that is, is the implication for that that this is not just a done deal for the MBTA, it's a done deal in the city of Quincy. So we're losing that cash. Well, I'm a city councilor. Yeah, I well, represent these folks, and I know. as you do, I know. I, it's not a done deal with me. Is it a done deal with you? It's not a done deal. With okay, me. so then let's not say it's a done deal. I think these people well, deserve think, better than that. I'm right, saying well, it's a done deal. Well, it's not a done deal to me. Anybody else have any questions or, or comments? Let me ask Nina, go ahead. No, I'm going to move around the room. Two no, I didn't, Ian, there. I didn't like the implication that it's a done deal, okay? Right. That somehow there's corruption involved and, oh, you're going to get it for a dollar. I don't like that. And I'm okay. not going to well, put up with that kind of talk. Surprised. So I'm moving yeah. on. Well, I'm you can host a community that. meeting and you can say anything you want to say. But I'm not going to allow you to insult people okay. while we're here at a community meeting. I'm not okay? It's not Facebook. I think we're being Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, clearly she didn't call you corrupt. Uh, okay. Clearly we're all really passionate right, about this issue. And um, I will just say by... I, I appreciate that Councilor Kamuchi held this meeting. He shouldn't be forced to play catch up with you guys on this. And I would really hope that the next meeting does not transpire the same way. Three years ago, not your, not you know your team specifically, but somebody at the MBTA, you know they were doing work at North Quincy. Two years, two of our other colleagues and myself were requesting meetings, and then two years later, we got a notice also through the ledger that a week from that notice they were shutting down the parking. There were no translation services, nothing had gone out to anybody in the community. Things were flyer dropped on cars, so the people who were getting rides or taking the bus to the train didn't actually know that this was going to happen. We had them come in front of us, them being the MBTA, again, not you specifically in this team, but the company that you work for came in front of all nine of us and owned up to it, which I genuinely appreciated. Right? You guys owned up to it and said, we will do better. Here we are a year later. The same week as the Lunar New Year, where we're getting notices and having to, you know, put together a community meeting because we would otherwise just sign up through the ledger. So 12 months later, you're not doing better. And I would really hope that with that smirk on your face, first of all, if you could wipe that off, I would appreciate that. And I'm not the kind of person to ever say that in public, but we are very passionate here, and I do not appreciate that kind of reaction to what it is that we're talking about. And secondly, if you can't make promises here tonight, I see you taking notes. I, I would hope that you're taking those notes back to your team to come back with some actual answers that we can take, you know, as answers, not not roundabout answers because you don't know specifically, you know. And whether it's a done deal, whether it's not, the, the entirety of this problem is that we continue to get notified, including the residents, by way of the ledger. Even before that, even before North Quincy, even before this debacle, Wollaston. The only reason that happened the way it did is because our senator back there found we had to call the Secretary of Transportation down to Quincy so that we can get answers and the commitments that you guys have promised us. Again, not you specifically, but this is everything that we've been dealing with with respect to the MBTA before tonight. And, and I really implore you to take that into consideration with how you approach us in the city moving forward with community meetings, with updates, however you go about it. It's not just this one project, right? It's not just this one neighborhood. We've been dealing with these issues with you and your company for four plus years with all the construction that's been happening here. So my request to you is that you, again, stop smirking. I don't know why you're smirking at me. I'm very serious and passionate about this. And secondly, to take us seriously and come back with real answers. You know, let us know ahead of time what's going on. So he's not chasing the ledger to try to find out what's going on. Um, have translation services, that would be wonderful. Make sure you have access and yeah, just, just understand that this is not just this one project, right? There's a lot that comes with it. So I, it's not a question, I apologize. It's a little bit of a rant, but I, I think it's important that you understand what we're all coming from here. So. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that, Councillor, and, and, um, and I think I, it's very nice of you to, to 
to say I'm not the team that did that before, but I, I'm from the MBTA, so I think it's an appropriate criticism to launch at any of us who come before you, whether or not we would have been involved in a previous uh, misstep. So, we blame you all equally. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. Um, I think that um, this was, a, we were, you know, we, we appreciated uh, Councilor Palmucci saying this, whatever the origins of the word, we appreciated him saying this meeting up and inviting us. Going forward, we would hold meetings of our own that we would run. We have things that we do as part of meetings like that, like reach out directly to bus customers to make sure they're aware of it because we know they're not always going to be picking things up off the channels that um, <coughs> folks that might be plugged into the city councilors, uh, you know, distribution network might. We are certainly committed to translation services at our, at our meetings. So I think uh, going forward, meetings that we hold that'll be our own meetings will be, you know, be run. Um, in a way, we'd love to coordinate with with your office and and your colleagues to make sure we're you know we're hitting the right people and we're getting we're getting the word out appropriately. Um, so I can commit to that. Uh, to you. Yeah, I just I implore you to do better than your predecessors. Uh, I really don't. Thank you. Hi, this is for Mr. Ian White. Um, I know it's probably just for me, but uh, the MTA warrant not brought, but do you know what's exactly they want brought? The, I'm sorry, Claire, Claire. Claire. He said they wanted to, they need a second means of egress off of Bergen Parkway. Is that all? We need to, I mean, I think we need to sit with you and understand whether, how much of your property that would, that would entail doing. I think that's a conversation we need to, to have to figure out. Right. Um, I guess I'm going to direct this out this high of the seat. I don't know if anyone over there is his boss, but we can set brain tree and let us know. Fellas, Brandy sucks because X. That's what we want to hear. We don't want it in our backyard. Brandy has no residence. Nearest one is, I don't know, half a mile away? Go there. Make that hotel look pretty. Does anyone have this boss? All right, you heard me. Reconsider. Send it up the ladder, up the flagpole, go somewhere else. We don't want it. It's great conclusionary remarks, but I'll take that on the wall. Can I ask two? One is. Yeah, you can ask two. Everyone else has. Yeah, two is okay. good. New York City just agreed to uh, put on five hundred electric buses, and that's the largest bus system. And I'm just wondering, do you ever talk to other cities that are, you know, ahead of us as far as things like that? Because I'm, you know, thinking where are they going to put in the Yes, yeah, so Eric, as Eric mentioned, uh, you know, at a, at a subsequent uh, meeting, we'd love to bring back our head of vehicle engineering. He's the, he's the uh, gentleman at the MBTA that oversees all of our uh, vehicle, train, bus procurement strategies, and he's, he's the one who really has his finger on the pulse of the, the rate of technology change. He's also somebody who has a, a, a really big network around the country at other transit systems, including New York. Um, so I know certainly he's in regular communication with New York about, about their strategy, and that's something I'm sure he'd be happy to talk um, at a future meeting with everyone about. And the other thing is, I was just wondering about the granite. The granite work is even, is that not going to go over there? Because when I've walked over there, you know, they have that building with all the broken glass and everything, and I get very, very disappointed that they were going to put the uh, granite work and that's right next to where you want to put this one. So, uh, have you been... No, I don't, I don't believe that. I, I haven't heard that. The, the city has some, uh, we're working on some designs to make that a pocket park with uh, pedestrian access to get you um, so that people won't cross at Bergen and um, Center. You know, you ever seen someone try and cross there? Um, it was terrible. The lights don't even time to give you enough time to get across. But we would kind of block that off from pedestrian access. And then, and then direct people through that pocket park um, to pop out over in front of Deco to cross where it's a little more, um, there's traffic calming measures there, it's a narrower and better controlled intersection. That's the goal, we're working on it. Uh, it's kind of a pet project of mine. We've, we've made a lot of progress on it, hoping to get there, but no, not the granite work. Any other thoughts, questions? <coughs> so you've mentioned that you looked at you know, quite a few sites, and you did an exhaustive sort of search for a good site for this. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, 
for this depot. And you also mentioned that you know the efficiency of being able to get the buses out to the routes and to the roads is a very important criteria for determining the site. How do you determine what that efficiency is without doing the traffic study? Uh, so we, I mean, we we have we have fairly uh, simple exercises we can do where we know the mile. We know we know what trip every one of our buses is is making. So we we send a bus out. It might start on a 215 and then become a 238. But we 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 can pretty quickly uh, calculate um, how many dead. They're called deadhead miles. The mileage that we're running a bus before it starts being being in service for customers. We can pretty quickly quantify what the level of deadhead mileage is with today's site at Hancock and then drop that facility down somewhere else and, and calculate what the mileage would be there. So it's not it's not a traffic analysis, so we're not looking at you know whether they're in free flowing traffic or whether they might be in congestion, but we are able to at a, at a pretty you know crude level understand what the what the relative um, amount of deadhead mileage would be. And and then they're pretty comparable at these two two sites. Yeah, I mean, the, completely ignoring the traffic situation is right? Right, yeah, which again, as I said, is one, one thing we have working our advantage is that we tend to not be putting stuff out into service at the times where the congestion is at its greatest. We're usually already out in service by the time congestion reaches its peak, but. But a traffic study would confirm. Yeah, the, tra the, the traffic study, which we will do, will we'll, we'll confirm or, or, or deny right, that. Right, yeah. right. Cool. Do you have your hand raised? Yeah. Well, I live on Columbia Street. And I just want to say that not everyone is opposed to that to that use of that facility because Quincy is 100,000 people. There's going to be traffic. There's going to be development. There's nothing we can do about it. But this it, it, this facility seems to make sense for its usage. It's it's close to the T. There's already a station coming into the city off the freeway, so it's not like it's a blight on coming into the city. I understand Caniff has has concerns, but I mean it's not like we can say we're going to kick Home Depot out because they're a bigger company and spare a smaller company. It's it's there's an economic decision in there, and I, you can look at me all you want, but I'm saying what I'm saying is that overall this project seems to make sense. And no matter what goes in there, people are going to have complaints about traffic, about lights, noise. So it's no matter what goes in there, people are going to have complaints. So I mean, and, and living on that street, I can see the, uh, the Lowe's and BJ's from my house. So I mean, it's like, I'm saying as an abutter, I think this is going to be a minimal, dis uh, minimal disruption for my day to day life. So I'm just putting that out there that it's, it's, it's not the end of the world. And I, I appreciate it. I'm not trying to minimize your, your experience, but. But you are, because it's taken away our family business. From I, I understand that, but I'm, I'm also saying that there's more than, more than just your company involved. Do you live on 10th Street? I live on Columbia Street. I said I can see All right, Lowe's well, and uh, BJ's from my front door. So it's, just, you know, it's, there's. Respectful. It's not total negativity about the project. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Appreciate that. What other location did you look at before you decided on? <laughs> yeah. So I, again, I, I, I named some of the communities we looked at. I, I'm not. Uh -huh. you, yeah. You, you, you named communities. Awesome. Yeah. Well, no Quincy sites. Yeah. So we can. Um, the ship yet? Uh, let me let me commit to come the next time we come back presenting as much information as we can on the site. I want to know now where you look before you decide <laughs> on Lowe's. Yeah, and I and I, right, and I and and I, I will I will I will need to I will need to. Scott is correct. Right? Where? We 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 cannot share that right now until we oh, have. Oh, it's not. It's it's fact, okay? But we will bring it back Does the, legend the next know? community meeting that we have. We will share as much information as we can with you about what the process was for identifying the sites. You can't answer us, can no. you? didn't look anywhere else. You decided on Lowe's. And yeah, we have yeah, no six, six or seven other locations <laughs> that uh, 
the, Rich, Richard's from our real estate team. We had six or seven other sites where. Where? <laughs> they were all they were all proximate to our Quincy roots. So they were in and around Quincy, Frank. Tell me exactly where. <laughs> they they can't can't on You're doing a great job. You, 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 Great in the courtroom. Yeah, it's your. You got him. You got him on the ropes. You got him stammering. I feel like I'm gonna jump in. And help the guy. Yeah, they can't tell you. Yeah, that's the bottom line. They're not gonna tell you. But this guy asked a good question. Does the legend know where the other places? Yeah. Because the legend's always a step ahead of the community. So, there you go. Uh, he's gonna go write his story. All right. We'll try and find it out. On the PGA website, we have a link to our project updates. So we don't get a letter last minute. I know other companies that do that. Right, so, so right now the presence that this program has on the website is on the MBTA's Better Bus project page. So I believe that's mbta.com better bus uh, backslash better bus. It's just a general blurb on what this overall program is to expand bus service. Once, we'll figure something once, out. I mean, yeah, once, that's a really good point. Yeah, once, once whether the it's project, their website or something that I put yeah. together and I distribute yeah. out to you. I, I got a, a text message about the once this moves into capital delivery. Um, um, on behalf of my mother, who lives right across the street. Oh, she probably got a letter. I'm Christine. Okay, yeah, I, get, I sent a letter out pretty far and wide, and, but we'll, that's a good point about being a way to, um, for you to access it without me telling you the update. You can find it out. And so we'll figure something out. Yeah, I'm sorry, I think there was, uh, yeah, it would oh, be so nice. There were, there were sheets, I think, up front where people could provide it. So if, yeah. if you filled out a, a, a sheet with an email address, we can certainly add you to it. Yeah, and then I have, I have business cards as well, and then there will be a website, there will definitely for, be a website for this project. We'll make sure that everyone within, you know, the, the city council, um, through, uh, through all the counselors, yep, we, we will make sure that all of it is distributed and, and it's an easy to find link and it's distributed to um, all the city councilors, representatives, senators, so that they can blast it out as part of their training distributions and we'll make sure it's an easy yeah, find to website. Yeah. Yep. We will, no, there will be a website. Absolutely. www.yhere.com. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sharing that so we mentioned substations. Yeah, apparently. It's a lot of electricity. I know. Is that noisy? It's not good. Mm -hmm. For a lot of reasons. It's good. It causes. I don't know. What it's, it's not. It's not good. Yeah, I hadn't realized that. Something certainly we need to follow up with them on, and certainly something you guys who live down there want to know about. Oh my God. Yeah. Any other thoughts, questions, concerns? Sarah? I know there's some unknowns, but do you know a time frame of when you might possibly be taking over these Yeah. So. The Braintree garage, we lose, I think, 400 spaces in that garage and it within a couple of weeks. So we're interested in getting access to it as, as soon as possible, but those conversations are, are ongoing. So just time frame in general. Just get it one second. Time frame in general. Uh, so there's, there's two tracks here, right? Because there's the, you lease it track, but you're trying to acquire a track. So what would be the next step in terms of the process right so you guys are now currently actively trying to get the lease in your control with the short term of storage and parking but the long term to acquire the site but you don't have the funding for that approved yet, right or authorization to do that uh, no we don't okay so you would be you would have to do that through the keys government yes. board and then you could execute so sure. that is to be some time away or I, I would I think that the earliest would be summertime. Uh, more realistic would be somewhere around the end of the calendar year, probably. Okay. If if all goes to plan, uh, that would be that would be the time frame. That would and be it, shooting. And in terms of the permanent plan for the bus depot, would you not do the traffic study, the sight lines, the uh, the project kind of um, architectural until you're approved? For that funding, or is that something that you would you would do leading up to? No, we 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 have design effort that's going on every single day, okay. and uh, and and we we are you know for lack of a better term working a little 
little bit at risk in terms of developing what those look like? Okay, so probably the, the next most reasonable time for us all to get together would be closer to when you have approval for the uh, purchase or whatever of the site, right? Acquisition of the site, would that be because you'd have more <coughs> the designing done and then you would know whether or not you're actually going to go after this site, right? Yes, uh, in terms of exact timing, I, I don't... Well, I'm not asking you for a date, but just in the process. That would make the most sense for us to have another meeting, right, before you've completed your designs and as you're trying to acquire the site. Well, you tell me. At, so, absolutely. I, I don't envision us being complete with the design for over, well over a year, um, if not even longer. Uh, that's why it takes several years, and it's 2024 before we think we would have an actual open facility at, on the aggressive end getting that facility open. Um, I, I'm, I'm running through my head, I'm, I'm, I apologize, Counselor. Um, I'm, in my head, I'm thinking summertime would almost be too long. I, I, you know, I think to a lot of the feedback we're getting, we do not want to be a bad partner in the community here. We want to try and improve, and if that means we come back every quarter, we come back every quarter and we start a cadence where we have open dialogue about the process going forward. We're not, we're not trying to hide anything and, and we certainly want to make sure that the community is well informed about our, uh, our program as we go forward. So what the exact time frame is, I'm thinking summertime. Um, but we'll be in touch if we think we want to pull that closer to Memorial Day time frame or if we need to push that closer to Labor Day time frame. I think uh, let's let Scott and I and the rest of the team go back over the next couple of weeks and, and feel what's right, and we'll reach out to you and, and set up something. Okay, okay, so let me be perfectly clear. What would be unacceptable as the next step is us to see a fully formed design in Patriot Ledger, mm -hmm. right? These folks all want to have a seat at the table to talk about uh, mitigation, what you know, trees, fence, substations, traffic studies, all that stuff. We want to be a as much as we can be, if this is going to go forward, we want to have a seat at the table and be a participant in the design, not subjected to the design, right? That's clear. We're good. Clear. Put that over. All right, listen, I want to thank everybody for coming. We are going to break up, right, the official meeting here. I'm not going anywhere. These guys can't even get out of the room. Uh, so if you have questions or comments that you want to share with me, with these guys, Chris Walker is still here from the mayor's office. You can go give it to him as well. Plowing questions, potholes, those all go to Chris. Uh, but thank you all for coming out tonight and standing up for your community. It's important. Thank you.